Feminity could have been a burden. A burden. So many infirmities. But you see, that visitation in April, I am not, I am not done with that visitation. You know, and I, I see that help has come. Help has come. Help is here. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. You know, the encounter was so much. It's not just about the witnesses that heaven brought to our community. It was about the words. Almost every day, there was a nudge. There was a speaking that came. You know, and that speaking is the encounter. Now, while we are here, you know, he's speaking. It is through speaking that we are raised. If we look at the encounter Jesus had with women, John, the first encounter of the women at the woman of, at the well. You said, he said, if only you know, if only you know, he that speak to you, you would have asked for this living water that will become a well that will spring up, say spring up, spring up. to everlasting life. So, everlasting life is attainable for a woman. Yeah. It's attainable. It's attainable. Jesus told her. Yeah. It's attainable. It's attainable. I know he said something. He said, where are you? Go and call your husband. You see, there are many things that have married to us. That have, they know, we, we ourselves know that they are not husbands. Because they can't lay down their lives. So are we here today? You have things that are married to your soul. That is taking the place of, your, of, the, of the Lord in our lives. We say today, you are not our husband. Today, we come to He. We come to He. Another encounter with Martha. He said if you had come early. In John, no, you see, John, 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 John. He said, if you had come, Lord, my, my, my brother would not have died. Jesus said, I am. Say, I am. I am. The resurrection and the life. So Jesus keeps telling us about coming up. He's always about coming up. Coming up to him. And he said, you know what matters? He said, I believe. So we need our heart to believe. As words are coming to us, we need our heart to believe. To believe. Another encounter with Mary Magdalene. Say Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. This woman, no, oh, love our Lord passionately. You see that passion that we have? It's for the Lord. Even in death, she was looking for him. Looking for him. Where is he? Where gave me his body? Just give me his body. I am content. Oh, there was another Mary. That poured alabaster box that the whole fragrance filled the room. And there's another Mary. <laughs> Mary. He said, Don't touch me yet. You don't understand. You see that program of everlasting life. Don't touch me. I ascend to your father and to your God. God's people, women of God. There's a program that God has opened up to us in this season. It's making us know that everlasting life is attainable. It is attainable. It is atta it's not for the men. It's not for the men. So I'm trusting that our hearts, it's our hearts you need. What you need is your heart. I see this encounter is by the words. Speakings. Speakings. You see Jesus, the Jesus we are saying you encounter is not the physical Jesus. So he might, he might choose to have that in our midst. But it's through these words. And I know there are words of liberation. Words of liberation. You see, Sister Yaki was praying. She said there are some things that are leprous in our lives. Today, they go. Today, we are cleaned. Today, we are delivered. In the name of Jesus. Join me as I bring our mommy to, to introduce our minister, the first speaker. Oh, before that, sorry. I got carried away. I was supposed to give... So this morning, we are going to have two ministrations from two of our mommy, our mommy, our guest minister, and our mommy in-house. And then we will, we will have questions and answers, you know, and we had actually said that please start writing them so that we will have enough time to collect if there are similar questions, 
you know, start writing them, then we'll also introduce our brides to be. We might not be able to give so much time for your testimonies, but we will introduce you. We will pray for you, you know, and then of course there's refreshment. So be, 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 be rest assured that we are not going hungry here, you know, and then we just see how God leads us. us. Mommy, thank you, man. Hallelujah! 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 <laughs> Hallelujah! Glory to Jesus! without sin. So it is possible for us to overcome. You see, those things that he had, that the father armed him with, that made him to glide through childhood, um, adolescent, teenage years, adulthood, until he went to the cross and he didn't sin. Did you hear that? The father kitted him with substances. And his Bible says we don't have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So the high priest is here with us today. With those things that his father kitted him with, they are going to come to us via words. Words will address our shortcomings, our infirmities, our inadequacies. Our ignorance. You know, the high priest is a master of helping ignorant people. Our ignorance. We, we, we spring from the place of ignorance. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. So things we go, we are going to be spoken to us today that will address all those things. And then that will take us from where we are now. Because our goal, our object is that we go grow up to him in all things. Little, little things will stop. If you marry the wrong person, it will stop your growth to him. You'll be distracted with fixing marriage. You get entangled wrongly. When you're not supposed to get entangled, when you're 18, you're having crush. It will disturb Daniel. She's the wife of the pastor or the co-pastor in Hallelujah Christian Chapel in Abel Kuta. I'm so confident of the God in her that you are going to be highly blessed by her. Her leadings, how God has helped her, how God has brought her up to share with us who are planning to get married. And those who are already in marriage, she will share with us from her wealth of experience. I know you are all going to be blessed. But I just want to, you know, acknowledge those who are with us, our pastors, I know some of them are on the way. Pastor Lilia and Buchuku, the that's the co-pastor of New and Living Way Church. I know she's on her way. Her heart is with us. She'll soon be here. We love her. We appreciate her. Uh, I want to appreciate Pastor Dupe Ehima. That's the co-pastor of Love Seal. Church, Lagos. I want to appreciate if it's Ayaki that led prayers. That's it. We all know her. That's the wife of our pastor. We are so blessed to have with us two of our male pastors. Pastor TJ and Pastor Iola. I invited them and I called them Moses in the house of Jethro. You know Jethro, Jethro has many daughters and Moses was in his house. So because we might be overwhelmed, I think there's, I know one sister that interprets tongues and I know all of you are full of tongues. So <laughs> I don't want to overwhelm that one sister because she happens to be one of them. Is she here already? Ore? Ore, aha. So I don't want to over because if you begin to take all the tongues here, yeah, you will hear. So I beg them to come, to come and relieve Ore. So I think more sisters will come up with that gift of interpreting tongues very soon in the name of Jesus. So, oh, let's clap for Pastor Lilia. <laughs> Pastor Lilian. Ebuchuku. We are happy. Amen. We are happy to have you with us. God bless you. We love you. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Pastor Isioma Kalejaye, God bless you. God bless you so much. And I, I want to also appreciate the people who came with our guest minister. I'm sorry I didn't collect your name. Forgive me, sir. But you are welcome. We love you. Just endures. We are children. We are all children here. There's no adult among us because Jesus said, Except ye be converted and be like little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So, all of us here, we are children. So, just pardon our excesses. We can shout a lot and do some children's stuff. Do you understand? Just endures today in the name of Jesus. And I welcome all of you. I thank God for, okay, the elderly sister, Sister Mabel, Sister Enivie, who came to help us with our guest minister. God bless you. Thank you so much. All the men that are here with us, helping us on equipment, on um, technical crew. They are men. Jethro, I mean Moses in the house of Jethro. You are welcome. God bless you all.
All our sisters, God bless you. Thank you, the music team. God bless you. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Sit, sit, sit. Ah, time has gone already. We need to do this. So I, I will bring to the microphone now. Our she says she's no longer a guest in our midst. She's part of us now. So I want to bring to the microphone our mommy, Pastor Mrs. Debola Daniels. She's going to bless us tremendously. I'm waiting to be blessed. Thank you so much, ma. She will not allow you to carry her bag. I used to be like that, but they overpowered me, and I'm no longer like that. We will overpower her one of these days. Say amen. Thank you very much, ma. Can we just put our hands together for our mommy? Amen. Amen. Thank you, mommy. God bless you. I am not taking this uh, invitation for granted. I want to thank God for making it possible for me to be here. And I thank God for the life of our daddy in absentia. And of course, our amiable mommy, Mommy Yegoke, the Lord bless you mightily in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't want to start telling stories of how we met and how we got connected. Because there is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I want to just catch in on it. I would please ask us to rise up on our feet. You know, when we come into the presence of the Lord, the Bible says in His presence there is fullness of joy. And at His right hand are pleasures forevermore. So you will please allow me to bypass all protocols standing on the existing one. I greet and salute everybody. The Lord bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. Quickly turn your Bibles to John G's chapter 12. We want to take a quick prayer point. We want to, I want to just swim in, even in the spirit of the Lord that is here already. And uh, we'll just open the heavens again, even with this prayer. And then we go on as the Holy Spirit will lead us. Are we in Judges chapter 12? I will pick verses 5 and 6. But let me try and give us the background story, even to this passage. There was a battle in array between the Gileadites and the Ephraimites. And the Gileadites were, I mean, the Ephraimites were running away from the Gileadites. Do we understand it to that level? So verse 5 says, And the Gileadites took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites. And it was so that when those Ephraimites, which were escaped, said, Let me go over, that the men of the Gilead said unto him, Art thou an Ephraimite? If he said nay, then said they unto him, Say now, Shibboleth. And he said, Sibboleth. For he could not frame to pronounce it right. Then they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan. And there fell at that time of the Ephraimites. How many? How many? Now listen. If you look, you know, normally when there is battle and you are running for your life, it's so easy to tell lies. The Gileadites did not go into their various houses. They only waited for them at the passages where they knew they would be running through. So each, if you are just coming, they will ask, are you an Ephraimite? Of course, if you do not want to die. Eh? <laughs> they said no. They said no problem. Say Shibboleth. And they, 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 they thought they could pronounce it. If they knew that that examination will come one day that will make them to stay alive, I'm sure they would have employed the service of, a, of an English teacher maybe to teach them how to pronounce it very well. They said Sibboleth. If you look at the two words, only one letter is missing. Is that not so? But that one letter missing made 42,000 destinies to be wasted in one day. Put down your Bible if you have one. One thing, one error, one omission, one deficiency. Whatever it is that is in my life, that is in your life, that can cost me my destiny. That can cost you your destiny. That can waste my life. We are going to cry unto God today to correct it. In mercy. In mercy. 
Are you ready? Now listen. You know, it looks to me as if all the Ephraimites could not pronounce it well. You know, we have some tribes, even here in Nigeria. The way they pronounce some words, when they say it, you say, ah, this person is from this area. They were born with it. What I'm saying is, standing upon the mercy of God and upon the authority of the word of God, even if what is an error in your life is genetic, even if it is the fact that you were born with it, I don't care for how many generations, you know, people have been carrying it. You have even come to accept it, that there is nothing you can do about it. But the Lord is here. Every error that has been cutting you short up until now. Our sister came up in the spirit of the Lord talking about leprosy. Are you getting what I'm saying? We are going to raise your voice unto God. You are going to cry upon your maker and say whatever the error is, whatever the omission is, whatever it is that can cost my life even to be wasted. Correct it, O oh Lord. Take it away in mercy. Let's go ahead and begin to pray. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, this my single life must not be wasted. I am not here for nothing. Every error, every omission that can make my life to be wasted. Correct it in mercy. I cry unto you today, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Look upon me and be merciful unto me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. It may be a sickness. It may be genetic. It may be a wrong habit. It may be a wrong attitude. Whatever it is, whatever it is that is reset, even to waste my life, to waste my destiny, to cut me short. Correct it, O Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Morebo shete kasanta ya. Neka satari alekebo kosho shoturiya. Neka satari alekebo. Anything that is making me not to be able, that is making me unable, this inability, take it away in mercy. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. You know, the Bible talks about a man. Who came running after Jesus? When the Bible was going to describe him, they said he was a rich, young ruler. He was having many things going on well for him. He was young, he was already rich, and he has become a ruler. But this man looked at Jesus, and he saw that there is something in this Jesus that I do not have. If such a man should be around us, I would say he is made. I mean, he made it at a young age. But he saw that there is something. That Jesus had that he didn't have. He ran after Jesus. He was a man of speech. He was not sluggish. He ran after Jesus. And he was talking to Jesus. He said, Master, Master, what can I do to enter into the kingdom of God? Jesus looked at him and loved him just as he loves all of us. And Jesus said, go and obey all the commandments. He said, ah, ah, that one I have been doing. And Jesus did not say he was telling lies. Jesus now looked at him again and said, one thing thou lackest. Not many things. Just one thing thou lackest. And Jesus now told him what he should do. But the man did not agree with Jesus. I don't understand. He had all things. Or one thing that he lacked, he couldn't agree with his maker. Jesus said, go and sell all that you have. Give them to the poor and come and follow me. He looked at Jesus. He said, you are too opinionated about yourself. I should just sell all that I have and come and follow, give it to the poor and come and follow you. He turned away from Jesus. The Bible says he went away sorrowing. There is nobody that will turn away from Jesus and we have joy. Where will he get it? Do you understand what I'm saying? One thing that the man lacked, Jesus did not hide it from him. Today, whatever it is, that one thing that Jesus is pointing at, it, my own will be different from your own. He will say, this one, this one, my daughter, this is the one I'm talking about. That the Lord will open our eyes. Go ahead and begin to cry unto God and say, Lord Almighty, as you did to that rich young ruler, 
Don't hide that one thing from me. Open my eyes, even in your word. Open my eyes. Open my heart. Let me hear you. Let me see it. Let me hear you. Let me see it. Encourage my heart to agree with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I don't want to turn away from you. I don't want to turn away from your counsel. No matter how much you have blessed me, no matter whatever I have achieved, if there is still anything that is creating a gap between us, let me see it, Lord. Show me mercy. Show me mercy. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I'm sorry, I'm just going as the Holy Spirit is leading me. You remember the story of Mary and Martha. Do you remember the story of Mary and Martha? You know when Amen. Amen. In the, in, when, when Jesus came to their house, you remember? Jesus had been coming before. But that coming was a different one. It was a different one. But they didn't, Martha didn't see it. Martha was good with hospitality. Very, very wonderful. But that day, it was not hospitality that Jesus needed. And Mary understood May we be sensitive in the name of Jesus. Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and she was listening. And as she was listening, Martha came and said, Master, uh -uh, can't you correct this, my sister? Don't you see how I have been running around and uh, she, she, she didn't help me? Jesus now said, hey, one thing is needful. But Mary had chosen that good part. We shall not be taken away from her. I am saying that there is something that the Lord will do to you. We deposit in you. It will be him. Nobody can take it away from you. No. If I am the one who gave it to you, I can collect it back. You understand what I'm saying? But we are talking about the almighty God. The Lord Jesus himself giving it to you. He said one thing is needful. And Mary had chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. You see, Jesus said he cannot be taken away from her. And that, that will be our last prayer point before I go on. And uh, this one thing that God will point our attention to, to today, we are going to pray, Lord, let me not miss it. <laughs> let me not become familiar, even with your word, and miss it. Because it was familiarity that made matter evil to miss it. Do you, know, do you know what pained me? Even after Jesus said that, I was trying to look at the next verse. Maybe I will see that they, and, they say, and they will say, matter packed aside all that she was doing and she sat down. She didn't sit down. She did not sit down. We are going to cry on to God again. All these, all these, because sometimes omission or error or oh, inability can come as a result of lack of knowledge. So when our mommy was talking about the fact that instruction will come, the word of God will come, because the Bible says my people perish because of lack of knowledge. We are going to cry out to God and say, send your word to me. Speak to me. Let me not become familiar with your word. Let me be sensitive. Make my heart receptive. Go ahead and say that prayer finally in the name of Jesus. Father, I am praying. Even me, even me, even me, even me. Speak to me. Send your word to me. Let me not miss out on your word. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let your word correct every error. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Neke seteria leke boko shoshotuka. Neke santaria. Neko soto kushenturia. Thank you, faithful father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we honor your name. We thank you for coming among us. Thank you, eternal King of Glory, for gathering us together. Thank you for being gathered with us. 
Thank you for what you have done already. Terrible things in righteousness that you have wrought even in our lives already. Thank you for what you are set to do. Thank you for what you will still do in the course of our staying together in your presence here. Lord, we, have only, we are only saying thank you. Father, please accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. We have come to declare that we love you. We love the way you father us. Huh? We love the way you father us because you are a faithful father. We are not serving a God who is, who is abstract. We are serving a God who is real. A God who has eyes to see. He has ears to hear. Our God who is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. Our God whose hands is not too short even to deliver. Our God who has ears to hear. What a faithful father you are. You have been so faithful in keeping us, in shielding us, in guiding us, in guarding us, in protecting us, in providing for all our needs. Lord, we love you. We love the way you father us. Hold us on. Keep us on in the name of the Lord Jesus. We have cried unto you today that God, you will speak to our lives in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, in heaven that you will help our hearts, that we will be delivered from every error, every, every destiny waster in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every omission, you correct it. Even if it is a matter of sickness, you will heal us. It, physically, emotionally, spiritually, in the name of the Lord Jesus. That in your presence, we will be filled with pleasures forevermore. And our joy will be full in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, please breathe upon, the, upon your word with the breath of life afresh. Let it come to us expressly. Give us understanding and help our hearts marvelously. Help our hearts to respond correctly, even to your word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Well, in this session, we believe God is at work already, dislodging and removing many things that can hinder his word. We are to share together on basic understandings, the things that we need to know to prepare us even for marriage, and also to strengthen those of us who are married in order to know how to handle challenges in marriage. And I'm trusting that the Lord will show us mercy. I am particularly touched by this kind of garden and the reason for it. And it shows me that there is hope even for this, our land, and there is hope for the church of the living God especially for us among women. The Lord will continue to show us mercy and prosper his pleasure in your hands, ma, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no way we will be talking about understanding how to prepare ourselves for marriage without going to the book of the beginning, how it all started. Because marriage is not people's idea. It was God's idea. It was God who instituted marriage in the beginning. Even though it may appear as if in the society, everybody is talking about it. But God instituted marriage in the beginning. So you will allow me to go back to the book of the beginning. And that is the book of Genesis. I will, I will be telling some stories because I know that most of those scriptures, we are familiar with them. And where we need to trust it, I'm trusting that the Holy Spirit will help me. You know that in the book of Genesis chapter 1, God created the heaven and the earth. Is that not so? Okay, and then when he got to Genesis 1, verse 26, the Bible makes us to understand that God said, come, let us make man in our own image. Do you remember that part in your Bible? Okay, I'm happy because you are carrying complete Bible. Eh? <laughs> you are carrying complete Bible that begins from Genesis. Amen. And the Bible says, God made man in his own image. In his own, he said, in his own likeness, made in him. He now went to say, male and female created he them. And I said, he made man in his own image. In his own likeness, made in him. Male and female created he them. And then he blessed them. He said, be fruitful. Multiply. You remember that? So uh, when were we created? Male and female. When? In the beginning. So we were all created together. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
as a female, as you are, you are not an afterthought. You are not a mistake at all. We were created together when? In the beginning. We were commissioned together when? In the beginning. We were blessed together when? In the beginning. In the beginning. So fruitfulness is your portion. It's not something that you need. It's something that God had pronounced even upon us in the beginning. Now, we didn't hear anything about this male-female again until Genesis chapter 2. Then in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, the Bible says the man whom God created, he put him in the garden and he gave him instruction. He said he should maintain it and that he should keep it. That's an assignment. God gave him work even to do. And in verse 18 of Genesis 2, the Bible says God came. He was looking at the man doing the assignment. The man was not complaining, you know, at least if he had done, we would have seen it. But God saw that he won't go far. He needed help. He I mean, he may not even finish the work. That's if he didn't die out on the way. God said, this one needs help. I will help you. He said, and God said, it is not good for a man to be alone. I I, the Lord, I will make a help meet for him. If you look at that scripture, there are two words. Help meet for him. If you look at other version, it says help suitable for him. One says help adaptable for him. Help that is complementary. At least that's how Amplify puts it. For him, help that fits him. I, the Lord, I will make. And God is still in the business of making. I'm praying that if you are not married, God, you will allow God to make you. Yeah. Even if you are married, you will also allow God to do what? To make you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. So, that was the beginning of marriage. Let me jump on in that Genesis chapter 2. By the time you get to, is it verse 21 now? Of that Genesis chapter 2, 21, 22. Let me see the exact passage now. <laughs> In verse 21. Before that time, the Bible says God looked among all the creatures that he made. He could not find a help for Adam. He couldn't. Then God caused a deep sleep to fall upon him. He slept and then God took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh. And the rib which God took According to that Genesis 2, he made a woman and he brought her unto the man. Do you know that it was, we will discover that it was Adam that was giving names to the creature that God brought. In the heart of God, our name is help. Tell yourself, my name is help. <laughs> when God was creating me, he had it in mind that I will be a help. A help. I'm challenging you today, even if you are married, that you must rise up. How will I say it in English? That you must rise up to fulfill the reason for your existence. If you are created to be a help, then be a help. Everything you will be begging God to put in your life or to do with you is for you to fulfill that purpose. And God will show us mercy in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. A help. And when Adam opens his eyes... And saw the creature that God brought. I don't know whether it has happened to you before. You'll be looking at somebody. You say, it's like I know you. It's like I know. I've seen this face before. I know this person. And Adam looked at her. And said, ah, this is the bone of my bone. And the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. For she was taken out of me. How did he know? That he was inside before. May the Lord give us understanding. Yeah. You know, in that Genesis 1, they said, male and female created he them. So the understanding I have, according to scriptures, we will see it now, is the fact that the male and female, they were inside one body. That uh, the scientists we call like hermaphrodite. So this, this wonderful creature, oh Lord, amen. Amen, amen. This wonderful creature that God created in the beginning was moved because he was God personified. He was called the male and the female. 
You, you don't know who you are. When our sister was talking about us as female, I said, hey, I thank God every day that I'm not a man. No. I thank God that I am a woman. Hey, don't let's go that route. Because uh, I know that God, God loves us specially. Mm. If not, is it not one rib? Eh? Is it not one rib that God used to create a help? Look at all these beautiful women. Can you imagine the world without women? Just one rib. Can you beat the ingenuity of our God? And he was telling the man, I said, I want you to fulfill purpose. For you to get there, this one rib is the one that will help you. If you will not get there, it is this one rib that will stop you from getting there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Lord help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Where am I? Genesis 5. We will come back to this Genesis 2. Let's quickly run to Genesis 5. I will read verses 1 and 2. Genesis 5, 1 and 2. We need to dig this so that you will know your worth. You will know the value that God has placed on you. You will know that you are different from every other person. Especially because you carry eternal life. Are we in Genesis 5? He said, this is the book of the generation of Adam. Please, is that singular or plural? Are we together? Adam, is it singular or plural? Okay. In the day that God created man, is it singular or plural? In the likeness of God, made him singular or plural? Then is, does the own end with full stop? Okay. So it's continuing. Male and female created he them, singular or plural? And blessed them, singular or plural? And call their name Adam. Ah, I have a problem. Amen. Is there not an error in that English? Eh? Eh? But there is no error in the Bible. There is no error in the Bible. Hallelujah. So in the hearts of God, the male and female he created, he gave them one name. And that name is what? Adam. And it was that male and female that God put in the garden. So when Adam, male and female put together, was in the garden, when there is a wisdom on what to do to be supplied by the female, it will come from inside. When there is something that needs to be done that is to be contributed by the male, it will come from where? From inside. Now when God now saw that it is not good for him to be alone, because he needed the man to have companion. Are you listening? Instead of two hands, there will now be four. Instead of two legs, there will be how many? Four. Instead of two eyes, there will be how many? Four. God decided to bring out the one that was inside. So that the two of them will come together to do what? To do what? What are they going to do? What was it that God asked Adam to do? Eh? To till the garden, to maintain it. That was an assignment. So every man has an assignment under God. Many times when some sisters will walk up to me, or maybe a brother, and say, hey, Mommy, hey, this one, this one, this one, hey, this is, I said, what is it that you are doing for God that you cannot do alone, that you need the help for? Because, because marriage is not an end in itself. Marriage is a means to an end. God, when God created Adam, that was not when he created marriage. He had blessed them. If he said reproduction, then he will reproduce. God knew what he was doing. But when he gave him assignment, he, don't you understand? When he made man... And God saw that it was very good. That was how God ended it. But he came again. He said, no, 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 no. It is not good for this man to be alone. And he made a help. And he brought the help even to the man. Are you understanding me? So a sister that wants to go and join him herself to a man that does not have assignments. He does not carry purpose. He's not going anywhere. Everything he is pursuing is not divine. You now say that person, 
I like his stature. He's good. He has good money. He, he has PhD. He has this one. He, 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 he's using one fine car. All those ones. Oh, even those who are saying there is no God, they have them. Are you listening? If I ask you now, do you want to marry? You will say yes. If I say, why do you want to marry? You will have reasons. You want me to do tests? Are you bold enough to tell me the reason why you want to marry? <laughs> eh? You don't want to tell me? Is it because of all I have said? We can be truthful. I want to marry because all my younger ones are married. Is it not the reason? I want to marry because each time I see my sister's children, my friend's sister, they call me auntie. I want somebody who will call me mommy. That sister, that sister wants to marry because of children. Is that not so? If you ask some guys, why do you want to marry? They say, I'm tired of eating around. I'm eating out. I want somebody who will be able to, you know, cook for me. Amen. <laughs> so, that person is marrying because of if he marries a sister who does not know how to cook. <laughs> Amen. Don't get me wrong, go. The sister may even know how to cook. But if you do not know how to cook the food your husband loves, are you listening? You don't know how to cook. I mean, you don't know how to cook. You can cook every other thing. People outside may be praising you. But your husband will be saying, I am still looking for who, my, a wife who will cook the food that I love. That's how it is. Amen. Some people, it is the pressure from, from your family. Eh? Or just in law. Time is going. When will you settle down? Some men will say, I want to marry because if you do not get married, people will not see you as a responsible person. In the society. So, people have reasons for getting married. Are you getting me? God also has reason for instituting marriage. And if you have a reason for going into anything, you will be expectant. You will be expecting that thing to come. So many people are expectant in their marriage. God is also having expectation over many marriages. And what the painful thing there is that many people marry for themselves. Not understanding the expectation of God. So God will wait and wait and wait and wait. When his hopes are dashed. And what he's expecting from that home is not given. He turns to another. Sometimes God needs to wait for children that will come from their loins. To come and do what he had in mind. That that like, excuse me, that's the reason for this kind of meeting. Because if you have understanding, you will know what you are going in for. The Bible says there is no man that will want to build a tower. That will not first of all do what? Sit down. And count the cost. So you don't just jump into marriage because everybody is jumping. If you, if you join them in jumping, you will not go far. Before you begin to say, ah, I didn't know it's like this. Nobody told me, ah, I did not know this is the kind of thing I will meet. Your teacher... Your instructor will not be outside the Bible. The Lord who introduced, who instituted marriage, give us manual that we should follow, even in doing this. May God give us help in the name of Jesus. As I was saying, I said, Adam opened his eyes. I said, this is the bone of my bone. This very specific, very particular. Not these. He saw it as if this one is of me. It speaks of identification. Ident we will still talk about that one when we are talking to the married. But she, he said, she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of me. Then the Bible now said, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall do what? Cleave to his own wife, and they will become a man. And that is what I call definition of marriage, becoming one. We were one before. We were separated. God now say, come together again to become one. And that's where the labor is. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not 
ashamed. May the Lord help us on in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let me quickly establish the fact that becoming one flesh is what is actually marriage. If you, you know, we have seen one premise now in that Genesis 2. In that Genesis 2, he said, this is, the, this is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. I want you to, to, to keep it in one place. Because the next verse says, therefore, or for this cause. So if you want to say, for which cause? You need to read the preceding verse. And what is in the preceding verse? This is the bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Put a steric, we will come back. If I forget, to remind me. Amen. If you go to Matthew chapter 19, Matthew chapter 19, if, I read, if we read it from, is it verse 3 now? My husband normally cracks a joke that he's so sure that there was no woman in this meeting, this meeting of Matthew 19. The Pharisees in verse 3 came to Jesus, tempting him and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? For any reason. You need to understand what they're asking. If I married my wife as Lekpa. And after one or two children. He has become. Eh, he's under every cause now. Any reason. Can I put her away? If I ask for a plate of rice. And all that I am eating. Is uh, Salt. Plenty of salt and small rice. Can I put her away? When she wakes up in the morning and she does not greet me very well, because I know how my mother used to greet my father, hmm? and she doesn't greet me very well, can I put her away? That is what they were asking. You know, can you see the heart of man? I want you to say thank you, Jesus. Especially for us as women. Because if not for Jesus, mm, there is no man that we want to stay with one woman forever. It's not possible. Their hearts will be... Don't, don't you see what Solomon did? He was trying them. The, the fair complexion, the dark complexion, the fat, the tall, this, you know, every, he wanted to try everybody. That's the heart of a man. But thank God for Jesus. Look at Jesus' answer in verse 4. He said, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning, made them how? Male and female. Comma. Is that not how it is there? And said for this cause. Shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be how many? One. Wherefore they are no more two but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together. Hmm. Let no man put a son. Do you know that if you read it down, even the disciples, they said if the matter is like this, let nobody marry. The disciples of Jesus, are, are you trying to say we should be together forever? I think it is better for somebody not to marry. Because man cannot comprehend the mystery behind marriage. It was God who instituted it in the beginning. Even the devil is confused. But the devil knows that God wants to use it as a powerful tool against him. So the devil is after it. So it's after that institution. It's not, it's not your flesh and blood though. But once you agree with God, you say you want to marry the way God wants it, it will, the battle line is drawn. So if you just say, when I enter the marriage, like this, I will just enjoy myself, myself and my husband, and then our children. And, then, and you don't understand that there is, you are in a battlefield. <laughs> you will be a cheap prey. God will deliver us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So you see another for this cause. Is that not so? And when we read the preceding verse, what does it say to us? It says, male and female created he them. So we'll still discuss about two things. This is the bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Then, male and female created he them. That's going to be the food for the married because it's going to help us in overcoming challenges. Because if you have this understanding, many, many challenges will be a walkover in the name of the Lord Jesus. But let's talk 
talk about those of us that are yet to get into it. I need to let you know from what Adam declared, it is not anybody you can marry. I mean, you need to marry bone of your bone. There are some bones they are misfit. Mm. Is it that they are too short for this space or they are too long? And since what we are seeing outside is not the bone that wants to go and fit in. Many times we settle on what we see outside. It's just external casing. I tell my children that as I'm putting on skirt and blouse, I am mommy. If I put on agbanda, I am still mommy. If I wear skirt suit, have I changed? I am still mommy. So if this external one is changing, it does not change the person that is inside. The mommy that they know is the person. The wife that my husband married is who? The person that is on the inside. Don't get carried away by what you see on the outside. It is the person that is inside that you are getting married to. And the person on the inside, you can't know the person naturally. I mean naturally. You have to go through the maker who will be able to open your eyes to see who the person is. You know, my husband, he said when he was praying for who he, was, he would marry, he's a dark complexioned man. So he said in his mind that he was going to marry a fair complexion lady. It's just that he was not allowed that he would have married Oyibo Gongon so that, uh, because he was too dark. So he started praying, but his preference in presenting people before God are the fair complexioned one. Hey. So one day, <clears throat> he now saw this sister in the fellowship and he started, you know, as characteristic of olden days Christians that we grew up with, you cannot just go and do anything without praying and fasting. So he started praying and fasting, praying and fasting, oh Lord, this sister, before I go. Then he said, on the third day of the fast, he had a dream. He saw himself in the room and with the sister and suddenly he wasn't seeing the sister again. All you could see, they were like 300 snakes. They were so many, and they were charging at him. He was defending himself. He was shouting. He was crying. He was sweating. When he woke up, the pillow was soaked. He was also soaked with, 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 with sweat. He said, he got up. He said, Satan, you are a liar. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You want to tell me that the sister that is spirit-filled, tongue-talking, heaven-bound, is a snake. This one is the devil. It's a confusion of the highest order. I am not going to agree. But God showed him mercy. He didn't stop his fast. So he continued. He wanted clarity. He wanted clarity. On the seventh day of the fast. <laughs> it is good now. <laughs> On the seventh day of the fast. He now saw himself and the sister. They were walking. They were talking. And then a brother joined them. He said he didn't like it because three is a crowd. Mm -hmm. So as they were going, suddenly my own husband now slipped and fell into a ditch. The two of them looked at him. They said, take care. <laughs> Hurry up and join us. And they, they left. He said he managed to get out of the ditch. He looked at them going. He said, this world is not worth following. I fell into a ditch. He could not even wait to help me. He said, when he woke up, he went to break his fast. <laughs> he has already... <laughs> Amen. He has already gotten an answer now. How else do you want God to speak? He said, do you know that in real life, the two of them married one another? Are you listening to me? He would have been a misfit. She would have been a misfit. That brother. He's a brother too. The, the brother married the sister in real life. Those were the ones that were meant for one another, not for him. When I'm talking to people, I will say, I am the only one that can marry my husband. Ah. I am the only one that can marry. Mommy, I am the only one. Who, I know what I'm saying. <laughs> Amen. And he is the only one that can marry me. Because you don't know me. You don't know me. Oh. Do you think you know me? And you don't know him too. Amen. It's only God that can show us 
who the person is. So that we will not be a misfit. And to know who you need to marry, <laughs> you can, you must have a relationship with God. Daddy Kumui, years before I got married, he was preaching and he said, there are some people, their names were in the book of life before they got married. He said, after marriage, the way they conduct themselves, their names have been removed from the book of life. You know, I, I believe I'm talking to those who understand that we are serving a living God, who has told us that we are just passing through this world and that we have a place that we are going. And that place we are going, we are going to give accounts. Oh, so if we know that we are going to give accounts, we will live our lives with the consciousness of the fact that we were sent here and we will go back. May God help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. It is necessary for us to know the will of God in marriage because marriage can remove people's names even from the book of life. Now, when somebody is young, we talk of different uh, stages that they need to go through before they will be ready for marriage. And that is, a, we talk of physical maturity, social maturity. We also talk of um, um, ethical and psychological maturity or readiness in marriage. And we add the most important one, and that is the spiritual readiness, spiritual maturity. Please grow normally. Grow physically. Even Jesus, the Bible says he increased in stature. There are many sisters who want to marry, they are not preparing themselves, even physically. I mean even physically. You are not eating. You don't know. Yes. And you want to carry pregnancy. You are, you are taking only gala. I got to a point in my encounter with God I stopped taking medication In pregnancy I wasn't taking medication Nobody It was, not, it was When I met my husband Mommy Where I grew up from We take something like bread in the morning Ogi and papa and the akara Or momo in the morning Yam It was when I went to school I learned how to eat rice In the morning It was not part of our breakfast at home but when I met him, they, they eat pounded yam. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Amen. When the pounded yam remains, they will keep it in following morning. They will put okra on the fire. They will put it as lumps. And they will be eating it. If he is here and I'm saying this one, you will see the way he will be doing his eyes. That, that, that's food. That's food. Amen. That's how he grew. That's what he grew up with. That's relatives. From where you can ask questions. How do you do this? It's, a, it's part of your preparation. If you miss it, you will still go back and learn it. So take up everything in the course of your journey. Ask questions. Help people. In the course of helping people, you will learn. You will learn. Don't dodge all these things. If you dodge it, you have dodged some vital things, even for your own life too. Physical maturity. Social maturity. Some of you can't even say, to even greet people is wahala. You will not marry somebody, and all of them will be looking at you. They say, she's even calling me by name. All your in-laws. How can you be calling them by name? And you, you will be surprised that your husband will say, you see, that's how we do here. Oh, all my younger ones who cannot be calling them by name. Oh, all, my, all our other wives, that's how they've been doing. Your own cannot be different. Then you create problem for yourself. Somebody said, how can you be calling them? I mean, uh, respecting them, especially those of us who come from where I come from in our own country. They value respect a lot. Before you were born, that's what they value. Are you the one that will now change it? Ah. <laughs> I said, in church, I call people, oh, Sister Bingpe, oh, Sister Rhoda, good morning, good afternoon. I respect them. Does it make me shorter? Does it make me fatter? What does it add to me? I say, I don't mind calling anybody, respecting them, and I will still send them on an errand. <laughs> Is it respect? I will give you what you want, and, and you will still help me. I will help you, you will help me. Please learn wisdom. Socially, be, be free, loosen up. Loosen up. 
Mix with people. I thank God for a meeting like this. How can you come here in a lonesome way and go back the way you have come? It is the person you have known since the day you have been coming for this meeting. You have not even mixed with any other person. Connectivity is key. You don't know what, who, who you will need, who will help you. I mean, you will still be in need of somebody that is sitting down here. One day in future. So socially, relate with people. Don't hate people. Even if your mother-in-law is a witch. Are you listening? Cast out the demon now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or how are we going to prove? How are we going to prove that we are serving the living God? My mother can be a witch. Any life that doesn't carry Jesus can be a witch. Even you, you can be. Are you listening? The only thing that makes a difference is that you have Jesus. Who you have is what they don't have. Show it to them. You are not the one to be running away from darkness. It's darkness that should bow even at your feet. So some of you are praying that your mother-in-law should die. Especially, uh -uh, have you not heard it before? They said, don't marry firstborn, no. Hmm. Don't marry firstborn, no. If you marry firstborn, you will marry the mother. Uh -uh. <laughs> so somebody should be praying that I should die now because of my firstborn. Don't marry lastborn because they are like, uh, they're, they're, who should you marry? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Social, social maturity grow. In fact, that thing is, is putting people down, even in our various places of work. We don't have any emotional quotient. We are not relational. We are not just good. And you know, we've been talking about IQ, IQ. We've been talking about other, other quotient. Emotional quotient is key. How you can, and that is where you can express the love of God that is shed abroad, even in our hearts. Be willing to be like Jesus, whose heart is large, willing to take in people. And it's creating a lot of problems because we will still see that God wants to use your home to raise other lives. It's not only you and your husband, though, because if it is the case of our mommy and her husband, you people will not be here. I don't, want, I don't want anybody to just... Because I'm afraid, you see, the girls these days, eh, they can collect your husband. Uh, which husband will they collect? Is it the one that you collect from God? Is it the one that has his own head under Christ? Is it the one that knows where he is going, you are the one following? Or is it the one you collected from around? Are you listening to me? Ah, God will show us mercy. Many lives out there that are supposed to grow under you. Because what mommy and daddy are, and other women of God are doing for us here. They are putting us into debt. Because there are many lives out there that do not have access to this. And it will, be, it will just be a, a sin for you to be helped this much. And you will not help other lives. People don't have to fall where others are falling. If you are being helped, you will help other lives. And how will you help other lives if your life is not open to them? God will show us mercy. So develop yourself socially. Know how to relate with people. Know how to tolerate. Ethically, psychologically, be ready for marriage. Know who you, some of us have inter, inter what is it called? Inter uh, ethnic marriage, inter tribal marriage. And you will not learn about how they do there. You will want to stand. Kakara, 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 kakara. The Bible says you must be adaptable. You, is the one, you will change. You, will, you must be flexible. That's how he created us. Spiritually, <laughs> know your God. If you are not born again, you must come to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ before you will understand what we are saying. Because these blessings are for his own. Then grow. Grow. Read your Bible. Pray every day. Is that not what we say when we want to grow? Leave that level. The way you used to do it last year is not the way you should be doing it now. Because you, God is sending you as a help. To help. You know the way I see it? For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. It's like God uprooted my husband from his father and mother. And they hand him over to me. They say, help this man. 
how will I go back to God? Will I go and say I've helped him to go to hell? Oh, you don't understand. Do eh? In the place where I start sitting and complaining and expecting and worrying and saying something, the man suddenly disappears. Hey, and then he's on his way to hell. How will I face God? What am I going to tell God? He, God will say, I will say, you don't know him. Oh. That man is very stubborn. He's very hard hearted. I said, did you ask me for help? Did you return to me to tell me that you cannot cope with your own physical health and I refuse to help you? That's why how you will run your home is not found outside. It is from the word of God. Now let me quickly go back to our singles, my time. It is necessary for you to know, it is necessary for you to know the will of God. Because a prudent wife a, or a prudent husband is always from the Lord. It is the Lord that can tell your spouse to do this and he will obey. So he also knows who is best suited for your composition. Because there are some makeup, emotionally, psychological, attitudinal, your potentials and your giftings. There is somebody that fits in. It's only God who knows the person. One of our friends, pastor friends, when they were in school, Mommy um, okay, we know this person if I mention his name. He said, there's this sister in the fellowship, you know, in the fellowship. They've been, he's been praying, he's trusting God. They were friends. And so, sister was also waiting. Maybe one of these days, the brother we propose. And so, he said, anytime he would leave his room to go and visit the sister, when he wanted to see it, his heart, he would be beating very fast, like palpitation. It's like, if you say it, if you say it, ah, he will keep quiet. When he began to speak about other things, he will be at peace. But anytime he wants to speak about proposal, there will be this palpitation. So one day he carried the matter to God and he said, ah, God, what is it? What is the problem? Is she not a child of God? Then God now said, she is my daughter. You are also my son. But she will be too expensive for you to maintain. He said, God. You know, we grew up to dialogue with God. We grew up to dialogue with God. You can present your matter. God will say a thing. It's a level low. Are you listening to me? It's a level. And if you have not gotten there, you have not gotten there. But you see, the beautiful thing about God is that he deals with you at your level. At your level. So this one and I said, ah, expensive. You are calling me to be your servant. Am I going to be like a pauper? Am I going to be poor? And God said, uh, she will be too expensive for you to maintain, both physically and spiritually. And God gave him an example. He said, you see, this is, my, this is my daughter. She is my daughter. But I'm preparing her for somebody else. He said, today, oh, our faith can go up like this. Tomorrow, it will go down. He said, if you marry her, when her faith is up, you are fine. When her faith is down, you will turn away your face from my ship. To come and maintain your wife. Before you come back again, the sheep are scattered. He said, that is not the kind of person I'm preparing you for. I've not had that kind of thing before in my life. And God said, you see this one? When she is used to something, you can't quickly break it up. It's not today that you say, we're going for summer. We're going for summer. You know, we went for summer 2019. 2020 is a lockdown season. But this 2021, we, we, we would have gone for summer, but for the con 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 conference that we want to hold, we need funds. He said, con what? Eh? Con what? Last year, I couldn't go because of lockdown. I understand. But this year, ah, I'm going to. <laughs> Amen. God gave that brother several examples. He became persuaded that that sister was not meant for him. You must get to that level of persuasion. That somebody is not meant for you. Or somebody is meant for you. In fact, this persuasion was needed with a sister that is in church. Are you getting me? So it's the, the one that is not in church is not... Amen. And you see, these days, the ones in church need extra. Ah, ma, 
I was in Abuja for a wedding. And I, the sister that came to pick us, and I was saying, Sister, Kilo Day, Kilo Shelley, you have not called me. He said, ah, Mommy, if anybody should come to me, even uh, from outside, I will pray. He said, But if anybody should come to me from church, I will pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. <laughs> ah. I said, Why? Ah. He said, Because there are many people in church now. Do you know so and so? I said, yes, she got married last year. I said, the marriage is no more. I said, why? He said, the brother is gay. Uh -huh. I said, gay. I said, where did they meet? I said, where did they meet? He said, church. I said, they met in church. I said, okay, wait till. Because God can, God alone will be anybody. Mommy, how will I say it in English? Eh? Eh? <laughs> Help me now. Do you understand what I'm saying? God cannot be at fault over anybody's life. He is good. He is just good. Even if it remains small, for somebody to fall into a ditch, my people say lightning will come and make way. I mean... Even if it, God will sound an alarm. Even from heaven. If it is not into your spirit, it will be in the spirit of somebody close to you. Somebody will pick it. I said, did everybody sleep? I said, what is the matter? Her father didn't see it. Her mother did not see it. Because they are in church. I said, eh, eh, I said the friends... The pastor eh, of the church she was attending didn't see. I said, if all of them do not even see, she go gone. What about she herself? If she has a relationship with God, we go keep quiet. It's not in the character of our God. He, I mean, he, and he can't start that. He can't start that. It has never been in the character of our God. He won't keep quiet. I said, you see, my people, they will say the dog. That wants to get lost. He doesn't hear the, the whistling of the altar. That's how some of us behave. How can somebody come to me and say, In fact, that issue of gay, my son was telling me that some of them, when they go visiting the sister, they go with their partners. And he yes, and they will be telling the sister, You see, I'm very sorry for coming with my friend. I don't want us to commit, uh, to, fall, uh, to commit fornication. And they will be deceiving you like this. And there is no alarm in your spirit to pick it. And you don't have jealousy for your life. That there is nothing. God is quiet. Eh? There is no confirmation about the step that you are taking. And you are going headlong. Ah, please, let's, let's, let's settle down. Let's settle down because God is not unrighteous. I think that's the word I'm looking for. He's not unrighteous. He's very good. He sounds alarm. And if he has not been sounding alarm, begin to pray and say, Lord, come out to me like you did to Adam. Call out to me. Don't let me fall headlong, even into any ditch. Amen. Amen. I was saying, God, deals with you at your level. There are some people. Let me give you a scenario. If I am a father and I go to, into a shopping mall with my daughter, and as soon as we get in there, we, I, I go to the uh, maybe... Sessions where they sell TV, electronics, you know, as characteristics of daddies. And then the girl goes to the session of clothing. We came to buy dress, actually. And then he went, she went, she went and brought one and said, Daddy, 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 I've seen this one. Daddy said, do you like it? Is it okay? Is that okay? Let's go and pay for it. Who made the choice? Eh? Who made the choice? The girl. Okay. Let's imagine another one. We entered the mall and then we went together. And as I got to the place of the clothing material, I just picked the one. The guy was looking at me, and I picked the one that I feel is good for my daughter. And I picked it, and we went to pay. Who made the choice? Okay. And there is another scenario. The two of us, we get to the clothing, the racks. And as we are thinking, the guy said, Daddy, look at this one. And I said, it's okay. But don't you think it's too short? And he said, ah, it's true, it's short. Then we look. look. Daddy said, ah, this one is okay. And the length is okay. But the money, the money we brought... It's not up to this. He said, it's true. Let's look for the another one. And they saw another one. 
and that, that is of the good, correct length that they are looking for. It covers the body the way they want. And then the money is affordable. Who made the choice? Both of them. Now you need to get to that level. In your work with God. Because some of you, you will hear somebody come to share testimony. You say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you see. At the beginning of this year, I told God. That if, if, if by, by, by April, I do not get somebody to marry. I will backslide. <laughs> but I've come to say, this our God is good. Even when I didn't expect it by April lending, God just did it. And you're sitting down there, hearing testimony. And you're saying, That, 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 that canceled her and followed her. <laughs> oh Lord, where are, is it? where are your eyes now? Where is my own like this? Eh, where is my own like this? And God, you will not do something for me. And you are crying. Do you know how far she's going? Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yes, do, you know, do you know the total package of her life? Yes. The Bible says when we compare ourselves with our, ourselves, we are not wise. I told my children, I said, if I buy tomatoes, and I said, you cut these tomatoes, we are going to use it to garnish uh, salad. Or yeah, you wash up this one, add it to this pepper and everything, then you go and blend it. The one that we use to garnish the, the salad, we even use cutters, you know, different shapes and sizes. When everybody goes there, they say, no, this is good, this is fine. The one that they went to grind, to blend, he will be looking at that one. He said, what is my offense? <laughs> See, my identity has even changed. <laughs> they blend me. Nobody even knows that I'm here. When they finish blending, they now put hot oil on fire and pour it again. And it, what is my offense? This one, if people do not finish it by evening, Will it still be good? No. What do we do to eat? No. Hey. But the one that uh, if you fry this too. No. Amen. No. When, when I was still doing A levels in the north, when we would be going inside train, my mother would fry such stew, put it inside bon vita thing. Even if you don't warm it for three days, it will not spoil. That's the kind of thing we are talking about. You want the glory of God to show forth upon your life and you don't want to pass through fire? You pass through experiences? You pass through exposure? How will you be a witness? Witness of what? What do you want to go and tell people? Is that not what Jesus is showing? He's showing his scars. He's showing his, the, the, the things he went through. But you, you are dodging every dealings. You want it smooth. I don't know where you got it from, that when you become a Christian, there is no problem. Everything is just fine. Abi, is, it, is it in the scripture? He said, in this world, you will pass through. That's what they told us. He said, but I have. That is it. Because some of us are floating in the air. Because of sweet, 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 sweet nothings. That people are saying to our ears. People you do not know. God will show us mercy. Amen. Grow up to a level where you can dialogue with God. And even if you have not gotten to that level, God will still deal with you at your level. There are some people, they will share testimony of how they have known the person they will marry three years ago. He's still the same God. He might just say, that's the person you will marry you. So, focus. Be doing what I want you to do. You will not be confused. That's just the person. That's God.
Tessie Falota Maderia Passa Filo da Mai Cateria Zizi Prato Shevene Tabrina Tassie Liga Parada La Tessie Evene do Barida La Talia Zizi Parodo La Tofre Cata Liga Dasta Sibere do La Tassie Liga Lata Menge Veneto Sive Crasta Pony and Delida Vardalia Tessis and Brocotoni and Sevilla Talia Teta O Mapine Epine 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 Grow 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 Grow, 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 grow up, grow up, grow up, grow up, come up, come up, come up, come up, come up. Stop belaboring yourself with things, Atli. Stop belaboring yourself with things, Atli. Stop belaboring yourself with things, Kana. Grow up, grow up, grow up, grow up, grow up, grow up, grow up. For you cannot be an appropriate help without growing up. You cannot be an appropriate help without growing up. You cannot function in the place where I placed you to help the one that I'm going to lead to you. Even my son that I will bring to you. Even my son that I've brought to you without growing up. Without growing up. Without growing up. For you are enjoying the air with the air. With the air. With join the air of the air of life. You are enjoying the air of the air of life. Your destiny is the truth. So grow up. Grow up. Move away from the realm of carnality. Journey away from the place of the earth. Journey away from things that belabor women. Even women that are carnal. Even women that are stuck upon the face of the earth. Grow up. Grow up. I beg on you, my daughters. Grow up. Come up. Come up. It's a clarion call. It's a clarion call that is hanging upon this meeting. After this meeting, I want to see ascension. I want to see children of mine growing up. Leave carnality. Don't trouble yourself with carnality. Don't trouble yourself with carnality. For you cannot fulfill destiny if you remain carnal. You cannot fulfill destiny if you remain carnal. And I want strong women. I want strong women. Women that are done with shamefacedness. Women that are clothed with meekness. Women that are stronger. Women that would help my work come to the finish. Women that would help my sons journey to the end. Oh, grow up. Oh, grow up. For you see the problem of the beginning. Even the problem of Genesis chapter 6 was because sons of God saw women that are carnal and I ended my work. I don't want to repeat. So grow up. Daughters 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 take the challenge and grow up. Grow up. How your dad calls you to grow up. Grow up. Grow up. See Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a little shitty casting thing. She's a little shitty casting thing. I'm a little shitty casting thing. For you see, carnality is a big hollow of nothingness. Carnality is a big hollow of nothingness. You will be big, but you are you are light. You will be big, but you are light. You will just be an hollow, a big hollow. But I want to give you weight. I want to make you dance. I want to make you heavy. I want to make you wealthy. I want to make you wealthy for to be able to carry even bodies. I want to share my bodies with you. For my bodies at times they are heavy. They are heavy and I need an heavy soul to carry my body. For you see my sons that will lead your way. My sons that are with you now. They are bodies that you need to be able to carry. You can't be hollow to carry them. You can't be light to carry them. For they carry destiny. 
destiny, even my destiny. Oh, carry with, carry with, carry with, carry with, carry with. For this is a meeting of weight. It's a meeting I'm going to distribute weight. It's a meeting I'm going to cause weight to come upon you. I will make you dance. 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 You will leave this meeting dance. You will leave this meeting waiting. Say Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you. Do what you want to do. Help our hearts to be fully ready for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Our God is faithful and is real. Somebody said God is too old and too busy to create nothing for nothing. He doesn't gather people to waste their time. Neither does he gather people to waste their lives. He is here and he has a purpose. Key in, align with him. And our lives will not be in vain. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I was saying what the Holy Spirit is saying. That you need to go with God. If you want to marry a godly husband, you must also be godly. Because if you have a precious child... Even you and I. Nobody will have a precious child and give the child to somebody that doesn't carry essence. Grow up yourself to be worth it, to be desirable. Oh, when I was still, when I just gave my life to Christ, mom, we were taught to grow and carry God around. If an unbeliever should come around me and be saying something, I will go back home and cry. You know why I'm crying? Say, what does he see? Eh? And he's not afraid. And he was able to engage me for five minutes, talking that he likes me. Did he not see the glory of God? I will be crying that I have not carried the presence of God enough. So I need to spend time praying, praying and fasting. That when I look at you, you too, you will be convicted of your sin. Inside. Let me finish the story of my husband. He said when he was going to get confused, he now asked the Holy Spirit to please help him to pray. And the Holy Spirit gave him a scripture in Proverbs. Because if you cry to God, he will help you. But if you do it to your own self, <laughs> he said, the Holy Spirit told him, Proverbs 17, 27. Proverbs 17, 27. The Bible says, he that hath knowledge, spirit words. And a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. He said, he told God that God give me a woman of understanding and a woman of excellent spirit. Are you listening to me? He said, that, was, that became his prayer. He said, I'm not looking at whether the person is black or yellow or red. I want to marry a spirit. <laughs> it is a spirit I want to marry now. Because if you, look, if you look at me, this are these ideals. Ah, me, wole. And if I, if, if I look at him, this are these my own. More qualify. Are you listening? He said, but God, give me a spirit. I close my eyes. Even to every other thing that I used to think I like. You know, some things will happen now. Even in marriage, my husband will look at me and say, ah, I thank God I married you. I can't imagine if I had married all those ones. Who could have gone through this with me? Who could have understood me the way you have done? He can only be the one that was removed. I mean, he can only be the one that was removed. Because all I am asking for is, let me go back to my original place. Are you listening to me? God will help us in the name of Jesus. <laughs> it is not everybody that we marry. And the reason why I'm saying this is because it is not because we are saying now that marriage is meant for an assignment. Yes. So there are some assignments that do not need marriage for it to be completed. And I will give you, uh, for, for, for instance, somebody like Paul. Apostle Paul didn't marry. And he fulfilled his assignment. 
He didn't need marriage. Ah, in fact, Apostle Paul must not marry. Ah, if he marries somebody like me, that home will break. You don't know Paul. Paul, that will go for follow-up. And they will, they, will, they will plead with him to stay for a few days. He can stay there for three years. How can that one be a good husband? He can't be a correct father. So he didn't need marriage. And he did not marry. So if God allows you to marry, there is a reason for it. It is because he wants to use that marriage to achieve a purpose. Because there is no marriage in heaven. The only marriage we look forward to in heaven is between us and the Lord Jesus. May the Lord count us worthy to be part of that in Jesus' name. Amen. And in heaven there is neither male nor female. So if God allows us on this side of eternity to marry, then let's do it well. Amen. Let's do it well. May the Lord give us understanding. Amen. So if you want to marry somebody that is marriageable, <laughs> in the context we are talking about, is somebody who is born again. And I'm not talking of somebody going to church. Because there are many churchgoers talking of somebody who is born again. Somebody who has a relationship even with the Lord. There is a turn around. I mean, he's a new creature. It's not strange. Because we have many strange creatures in church. The only thing that has changed about them, yes. The day they say, I, I belong to Jesus, they said it. The only thing that has changed about them is additional itinerary of going to fellowship. And, and possibly carrying Bible, if they do, if they do. Every other thing remains the same. The same set of friends, the same places they visit, the same way they talk. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. If you have come to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, old things must pass away, and everything will become new. There must be newness in the way you talk, the people you relate with, the way you dress, the way you mingle with people. There will be a change, a complete change. If you have not experienced that, that then check it out. Because before you begin to run, you cannot carry this thing that we are talking about in the energy of your flesh. Mm -hmm. You see God emphasizing carnality. You will not be able, you can't cope with this. So let's, let's, let's go with God. So if anybody is telling you, and you are not, that he wants to marry you and you are not sure whether the person is born again, run for your dear life. Uh, meanwhile, God can reveal the person to you. That's how we used to pray. When I see anybody dancing, before you talk, I will go and ask God, who is this person? I say, God, who is this person? And God will show me. So by the time you be come with your manifesto, my answer is ready. <laughs> so if you say, if you say, if you say, eh, you have not even prayed about it, I say, it's not now, I want to pray about my life. I've been praying. <laughs> Sometimes it will be, you see, Sometimes it will be like you are watching video. And God will show you the end of the beginning of that person. What some things that he also didn't know about himself. God will show it to you. Don't just be careless. Don't be like somebody doesn't have a father. I mean, showcase our God out there. Pray. Say, who is this person? Is this person meant for me? Ah, I can, one brother like that, he just came and said, all the sisters sister that we are calling ourselves, it does not make us to really be, be close, be close. When he left, I said, God, who is he? Then God asked me, do you know I'm known? I said, I'm known. Yes, I'm known. I'm known. I said, I know I'm known. I'm known the son of David, the one that slept with his sister, the one who had a friend who, 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 you know, who, who, who gave him wrong advice. And God says that all. He said, I said, when he slept with his sister, the Bible says, the, the way he loved the sister is the way he hated the sister. I said, what does this thing mean? He said, this one, you can't offend him. I said, eh. He said, even if he comes and you say no, he will hate you, eh? I said, do they collect crown for number of proposals in heaven? <laughs> I said, I don't need his proposal. I said, remove, remove, remove boldness from him. Let him not be able to propose to me. He's my brother. I don't want him to hate me. We will be relating as normal Christian brothers. He doesn't have to propose because I will say, I will say no. Am I, is, is, he, is he part of my CV? 
I said, oh, don't let him propose. And I saw it in action. He will come home. When he will come visiting, we will this, we will talk, we will discuss, we can even share scriptures. When I see him off like this, if you get to the middle, he will say, there is something and I want to say, I will say, ah, you know time has gone now. <laughs> Maybe next time. Next time never came. I still see him in town. He's married. I love his family. He loves mine. But there was no need for such a thing. There was no need. Ah, you, will be, you will be around. What you will not eat? There is no need for you to be sniffing it. Ask, people, ask God, is this person meant for me? If the person is not meant for you, why do you need? That's why you must judge every relationship. Don't let anybody just get unusually close to you without a mission. Somebody God has not introduced to you, you are releasing vital information. Oh, God. Oh, God. Ah, if you know how God rates you, eh? As sisters, hovering over you like this, he does not even want anything evil even to come near you. God will show us mercy. Amen. Unbeliever is a no, no, no. Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. That's what God said. That is the written word of God. So don't, then if he's a backslider, ah, hey, are you the one that we convert? <laughs> Somebody that has even tasted the power and he has heard even from faith. You say, hey, he will change. He will change. He will change. Hmm. Are you the one that changed yourself? <laughs> and uh, when you hear that somebody is already engaged, in fact, they have even gone to pay dowry on that person. Uh, it is that person that God is now leading you to. Then we should suspect you. <laughs> Don't be deceived, though. Man is at his best when you are needed. I need him. Can I borrow you? Can I borrow you? Yes, sir. I'm very sorry. You see, in John chapter 2, when Jesus was at the wedding of Cana of Galilee, the wine finished. Is that not what they said? Jesus performed miracle. They brought wine. The governor of the feast, when they gave him the wine, he said, uh-uh. He said, every man, I can't remember the verse in that John now, he said, every man, they normally bring the best wine first. Then later, when everybody is drunk and intoxicated, they now bring what? The worst. Wait, why have you reserved the best for this time? You see, that thing that Jesus, I mean, that governor said, is a principle of a normal man. Now, you see this, my brother. I can call you Brother Abby. Okay, so. <laughs> now we are talking. We're in a relationship. We're just going. I, don't, I can't even remember. <laughs> so we're just talking. Thank you. And suddenly, I sleep. Do you see his hand coming up? Did I ask for it? Okay. I didn't ask for it. It's natural. I want to I sleep. And then he will pick me up. Then he will say sorry. He will say something now. He will say, <laughs> <laughs> are, are, you, are you okay, ma? Ah, you are putting ma. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, he will say, are you okay? What of your toe? I don't even know who put this stone here. Oh, are you okay? Are you sure? I will say yes. Now we are married. <laughs> oh, Yana. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you hear what he said? I said, are you married? He said, I'm married. it's our sin. <laughs> we are married. Same man. And I'm going again. And then, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, very, very practical. If at all, he even still stays beside me. And we are now going, and I sleep. What will he say? You see what? Are you blind? Don't you see this stone? That's why I don't like going out with you. Okay, be going, be going, because you, you, you may fall now. Thank you, my brother. God bless you. Amen. 
What am I trying to say? When you are needed, man is at his best. And when I say man, he's also talking about you. You too, you put up your best. So when people are saying we are dating, we are dating, you put up your best. You want to present the best. When you are captured, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you will no longer see them in excited state. They will now come to their normal level. And they bring out, you know, who they really are. And you too, you do the same. The only way by which you can have freshness of wine that can be fresh on a daily basis is if Jesus is the foundation of your home. He is the one that always performs that miracle. He still does it. He still does it. The wine of yesterday will be stale. But he still produces freshness on a daily basis. If you hang on to him. He is the same principle I'm telling you. You will be wondering, is this not the person I married? When you are settling quarrel between husband and wife like this, you will look at them and say, ah, did they ever say they love one another? <laughs> ah, some people whom the parents even said you cannot marry. They were crying. They said, I must marry this person. I must marry. Pastor followed you. Everybody followed you. Friends fasted and prayed till your parents agree. Now, you say, I don't even want to have anything to do with this person. In fact, see him. Hmm? See him. It, 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 it does what? It irritates me. Something has happened. You are building on something that doesn't have foundation. God will help us. So, when you are born again, you don't just go and get married the following day also. You must grow. If I will use the word wind, you know mean, meaning of wind? When you are breastfeeding the baby, a baby gets to a point when you win the baby. When the baby can depend on other kind of food and it begins to grow. You must be wind, meaning you must be established in faith. You must be established in the service of God. Some of us, we are lifting up holy hands. We are, I mean, what us that we do? We, we talk, we dance, we sing. Are you serving God? Because service is one of the ways that by which God will use to open doors for you. In the place of service, you will be found. Your needs will be met. Your needs will be met in the place of service. Be established in the service of God. Then you must develop your roots and your foundation. A walk with God. I can't overemphasize that. Develop fruits of the Spirit. What did I say? Because it is not home. Marriage will not add it to you. It is marriage that is the examination all of what you have. You may be telling us, what are the fruits of the street? You may mention them. Fruit, love, joy. Eh? What are the fruits of the street? Eh, eh, love, suffering. You mention everything. Whether you have them or not. Even if I say, do you have them? Oh, yes, by God's grace. <laughs> when God wants to find out. You know, when God wants to find out, he wants to show who you are to yourself. He will now set exam. Just exam on patience. Eh? Some of us who are married, your child can look at you and say, Mommy, what are you eating? You will say, are you blind? <laughs> Essentially, you are eating apple. Uh -uh. Is everybody not seeing apple? Why are you asking me that kind of question? Has she passed? Has she passed? What is the answer to that? Apple. He can say, even if God helps you and you pass that one, he says, Apple. He can come back and say, Mommy, is it sweet? <laughs> and say, eh, 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 eh. It is not sweet. If it is not sweet, will I be eating? Will you get away from this place? <laughs> Amen. Does anybody on, on that identify with what I'm saying? Inside fruit of the spirit is long suffering. It's suffering. Eh? And it's long. And we don't know how long. We don't know how long. 
It's inside fruit of the spirit. All these ones, you will be tested. I told somebody, I said, I'm writing exam on patience. I don't know whether I am in uh, level five, 500 level second semester. I don't know. Your own may be patient. Same patience. I mean, is it not like that? You may be writing patience 101. Some will be writing 502. You see patience. You see patience. And if you have not passed, you can't go ahead. One is a prerequisite unto another. And until you pass it, you can't go. I mean, you can't go to another level. There is carryover, even with God. Because you will disgrace him in the day of battle if, you do, if, if, if he doesn't package you very well. So you must be wind. You must know how to pray. Because they did not say, for this cause shall a lady or a girl, I mean, shall a boy, leave his father and mother and be joined to a girl. A man and his wife. Marriage is not for babies. It is for a man and a woman. You must grow. When the Lord was speaking to us through his, the, the servant the other time, he said, you, if you want to be a help, you must be strong. The Bible says two are better than one if one falls. The one that wants to lift up another must also have stamina. Can a baby lift up, you know? The two of them will fall together. You see, you see, you see this is what I've been talking to you about. So I told you that this thing is too much for us. The two of you will now. <laughs> you know, Amen. Can you imagine that woman? That woman, is it, is it, is it the woman? What, what was the woman that, uh, that took in Elisha? You know, into her house. Eh? She, she, this one is not a widow. This one has a husband. The Shunammite woman. Thank you. The Bible says that woman was a notable woman. She was a great woman. She didn't have child. <laughs> and she, she, she saw a man of God. And the man of God said, what do you want? She did not. Number one should have been what? I need a child. She didn't say that. Even when the man of God, I mean, she was said, I, I, he said, should I talk to you, to people? He said, I am, I am among my people. I, I, are you getting me? She was not looking for that. When they said, you will have a child, I said, don't deceive me. Even when she had a child. And the child had a problem. I'm looking for, God is raising women that we have had. The man, the boy followed father to farm. And he said, take him to her mother. The man said, take him to her mother. I'm looking at it in two contexts. You see that the man doesn't care. Hey, 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 let, let, let him take him to the mother. Or the man also does not want distraction from the business of God that he is doing. Say carry to the mother because he knows the woman that is at home. The woman carried the baby, put the baby on the bed of the man of God, and on her knees she prayed, titi, titi, and then the baby died. Even after that one, when she was sending a message to her husband, did she say, you are still there? Eh? I don't know what you are doing, no. Hmm. Your only son, the one that God, and you were there when he started this sickness. Eh? You said that she sent it to me, he has died though. Is that what she said? No. Carry the baby, he said, do me an ass. Give me an ass. And I, I'm going to meet the man of God. The husband was even saying, is it new moon? He said, saddle me an ass. And when the man that was riding was saying, he said, slack not for my sake. Don't say because I am a woman. You are going slowly. Move with speed. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know any sister that will be here and you will be able to look at your husband. You say, my dear, where God is sending us to, keep on riding. Don't slack don't slow down because of me. I am ready to follow you to anywhere. As long as it is God's purpose. Unshakable person. On the inside. On the inside. Be wind. Grow. We can't overemphasize it. Know God personally yourself. So that God can depend on you. The Bible says in Colossians 2. Colossians 2, 6 and 7. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Message of verse 6 says, my counsel for you is simple and straightforward. Just go ahead with what you have been given. You received Christ Jesus the master. Now live in him. If I now leave him, that's how message puts it. 
Verse 7, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as ye have been taught. See the exist, see the emphasis. As ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Message says, you are deeply rooted in him. You are well constructed upon him. You know your way around the faith. Now do what you have been taught. School is out. Studying the subject and start, I mean, quit studying the subject and start living it. Let your living spill over into thanksgiving. May God give us understanding. Pray. Prayerfully study your Bible. Observe your quiet time. Endeavor to pray fervently and continuously. Fellowship with brethren. This is essential for anyone who plans to grow into maturity. Now it is your duty to find a place where you will be thoroughly fed. And I thank God for a, a, a fellowship like this so that you can also grow in the Lord. Because it helps the choices that you make by his grace. Then you must have pure relationship towards opposite sex. Yeah, hey, it's my, in those days, we follow our brothers now. Brothers follow us all. No, no ill feeling. Nothing. But these days, if you see a boy and a girl standing by the roadside, even our own mind is no longer pure. And say, look, look at him. They may even be brother and sister. We, we, we don't trust everything. Everywhere is just, is just is, I mean, it's just as becoming pure. God will show us mercy. If a brother is talking too much with a sister, we will be hovering around them. But what are they talking about? What is it that is talking about? <laughs> so you should know that there is a divine ownership of your life and your body, spirit, and soul. It is not your own. It belongs to God. I want us to read a passage because some people have said, I'm the owner of myself. I want to follow my heart. Is that not what we say? I want to follow my passion. I am the owner of myself. I want us to read 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 3. 1 Corinthians, is it 3 now? We read 16 and 17. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Am I helping myself with all this? Yes, we must read the word of God. 1 Corinthians 16 and 17. It says, know ye not that you are the temple of God. And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Don't you know? Don't you know? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God do what? I, please, this is not a poem. <laughs> there is a kind of sacredness around the word of God. If you destroy, Abby, if you defile. Abby, how did they put it, ma? How did they put it in your Bible? If you defile the temple of God, him. If any man does him, shall God do what? Destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? If God considers us as people who are holy, then be holy. Be holy. Know that there is a divine ownership. You are not the owner of yourself. You can't live anyhow. Then flee fornication. What did they say we should do? Flee. What is the meaning of flee? Did they say we should stand there and be casting out the demon? Oh, you spirits of fornication. I cast you out in the mighty name of Jesus. Is that what they said we should do? What did he say we should do? Flee. Flee. First Corinthians 6. First Corinthians 6. Let's read 18. Oh, let me, let me, let, let me read First Corinthians 6, verse uh, 13. What is in verse 13? First Corinthians 6, 13. Is that where I say meat for the belly? Meat for the belly and belly for meat. But God shall destroy it and them. Now the body is not for fornication. But for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. Do you have message version? Hmm? Our, our brethren. Do they have message? Okay. Let me read the message. He said, you know the old saying. First you eat to live. And then you live to eat. Well, it may be true that the body is only a temporary thing. But that's no excuse for stuffing your body with food or indulging it with sex. Since the master honors you with a body, honor him with your body. Do you know how it came to me? God honors you with a body, fine face, no pimples, straight legs with curves or slim, 
as you can imagine, is God who honors you with it. If God honors you with that body, what should you do? Honor him with that body. Some people are even dreaming and fight and fasting that they will be like you. They say, oh God, I wish I have the set of teeth like. I wish my hair are like. People are talking, you know the way we complain. You wish you are like somebody else. And yes, somebody is fasting and praying to be like you. If only you know. So God says, if he honors you with a body, then honor God with that body. Flee fornication. And that means abstain from every form of sexual immorality. Ranging from lustful look at the opposite sex and all those INGs. What are those INGs? All the kissing, all the huggings, all the caressing, all the necking. Eh, for me now, don't you know them? Eh, eh, and you're looking at me as if uh, <laughs> I'm saying something that, that we do. All those INGs, what should we do? Run away. Run away from them, abstain from them. Many things in the scripture don't give place to the devil. My husband will say, even if you trust the brother, you trust yourself. I mean, as a sister, you trust yourself, you trust the brother. Do you trust the devil? <laughs> he hates you. He hates you with passion. He does not want you to have any testimony. Okay, how will you explain it? You, you, you did all those secret things. You shall worked it out. You got married. Everybody thought you are okay. And then they now bring people to you. They say, Sister John, Sister Joy, please help us to cancel this person planning to get married. What will you say? Let's even imagine that you know what to say by knowledge. And you say it. It will not carry weight. There will not be any life backing. You will just be saying no impact. Because you do not pass through it. You, do, you didn't. They said what we have seen, what we have been taught, what we have handled. You, you need to pass through it, experience before you become a witness. You know what the devil has done? He has shut you up for life. You are living you know, around you, but you are not useful to God. You are not relevant. Your home cannot be a heaven, even for people that are seeking for refuge. Do you see why we have problems around? We have problems around because there are many secret sins. If the Lord, if the, if the Lord, if I am not, if I am God, thank God I am not God. Ah, yes, so if God is like a human being, ah, ah, secrets, <laughs> you know, will be, there are some people, once you see them like this, God will show you everything about them, you, you're wrong. But at the same time, Sin is sin before God. Because if the Lord should mark iniquity, the Bible says so we stand. If somebody is committing fornication and aborting, you know, every moment, is a sinner. And the person telling lies, like some wives, they, they, they are helping their husband to do laundry. It's laundry, so they are checking for other things, and they now saw how much? No, I don't like that. Maybe it will even be 1,000 naira. 1,000 naira, and they pick it. He said, if I tell him, he will still give me. But you have not told him. <laughs> and he has not given you. What is the name of that person? A thief. Will a thief enter the kingdom of God? No, no, let's learn wisdom. Oh. Because you may be thinking that because somebody is a war, so promiscuous, I don't even want to have anything to do with this person. God will say it's true. He's a sinner. But you, you yourself, eh? you are a liar. You, can, you are not straight. I can't rely on you. I can't depend on you. I can't even give you my son because you will. <laughs> Amen. So God will show us mercy. Be weaned from your parents and other relations. Some of us are still like, you can't stand alone. Marriage is for men and women, like I said. So for, if men are here, I'll be talking about physical maturity, but I've spoken to us as women that you should not be a baby. You should not be a baby girl. The Lord brought a woman to the man. So you must be mature physically, spiritually, emotionally. Some people don't have shock absorber. I mean, they don't have. When they hear a news like this, 
the scripture will not spring up. There is nothing inside that is richly dwelling in them. Uh -uh. When problem is coming, let it meet with scripture. And scripture doesn't just jump there. You store it. Say, so let the word of God dwell richly in your heart. In the day when the enemy will come like a flood, then the spirit of the Lord will raise a standard of the word of God against it. So, when they say the only thing will remind you, it only reminds you of something you have before that you forgot. But something that is not even there. You can study anything on Facebook. You can watch any movie on WhatsApp. You can do all those, but they are not word that has been empowered to change lives. Spend time on the word of God. Eat it. Mm, memorize it. If you want to cram it, cram it. When we were growing up, they were bringing us up. We thought it was a, a label. Yeah, memory, 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 memory verse. And we do so drill. In those our churches, we go for competition. We say, is there no order? It's not. We are blessing them. And when you are having children, please, please ensure that you bring them up. Let them get grounded. But it is what you also have that you will give. So before you get to that level, ensure that you also put the word of God. He's not the one that something will happen to you in the dead of the night. He say, read me. You. Hey, you will not be opening Bible. Psalm, Psalm, is it Psalm 90? Psalm, 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 Psalm 90. He's the one you will get to the hospital. They will say, my, madam, your baby is breech. He said, my baby is breech. He said, so it's not likely you deliver this uh, baby yourself. The way we are looking at you, we may need to bring the baby out. He will go inside the incubator. And then you will be crying. You go home. Everything God has said will disappear. Because they never had roots. You will not even remember anything. You will be thinking of dying. Will I not die? Ah, ah. I will be thinking of that shock absorber. Shock absorber of the word of God. What did God say? A sister is engaged. And then a, a, another sister had revelation. That uh, on her engagement day, there was confusion and things like that. So she, when we were praying, she now said, I have let prayer. I said, do you have prayer point? She now said, then, let's pray that there will be light and that there will be clarity. And I, I said, I prayed it. And I said, what meaning that prayer? Clarity over what? Um, light over what? He said, she now narrated the dream. I said, eh, God is re the revealer of secrets. He only reveals what the devil is planning. What did God say to you? He rem she reminded me of the scripture, Hebrews 13, 5. That uh, let your conversation be without covetousness. And God said, for I will never leave you. And I will not forsake you. I said, has God changed? I said, be saying it to yourself. He said, he will not leave me. He will not forsake. He has never done it before. I said, read it in other versions. Read it in Yoruba. Read it in any language. Let it sink deep that this God... It will not, do you know what that means? I will not be stranded. I will not be confused. I will not, if you do not have the word of God, you are missing. Oh. Missing big time before you enter into relationship. Because that's what will give you light. Amen. Amen. So you must be win from me. And then that's what you will use to raise your children. Yeah. How will you help your husband without being wind? Ah, 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 ma. The word of God is true. The word of God. I don't know how I would have coped. I don't know why I'm still normal. I don't know why I'm not insane. I mean, there are many, many issues that we come up. How many people do you want to go and tell? They will say, I have my own too. Ah, God will show us mercy. Yeah. Then you must have correct disposition of hearts. You must, your eyes, you must not close one eye and be open another one. Could it be, could it be this brother? Could it be that one? Rest your case in God. And then God will lead you. He will lead you with his word. He will lead you through inner witness. You must know how God speaks to you. Yes. He will lead you through audible voice. He may. And if he doesn't lead you through audible voice, then stay. Ah, he, he will lead you because he's your father. In fact, somebody <laughs> said he had that the, his name is Tokpe. 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 <laughs> that week, five Tokpes came. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. They were coming in their different shapes and sizes. <laughs> Don't you think that that person needs more than that? Even if God is speaking to you through dreams, 
through trance, through, what is it again? Visions. Even if it is an open vision, you see it. Every of these, I call them audiovisuals, must be authenticated with the word of God. The word of God, the scriptures cannot be broken. He must be able to, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth is established. So all of them, the word of God, must be able to confirm it. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So you see that some of us that are even praying, Lord, let me know the person. That's not the primary prayer. You first of all focus attention on yourself. In fact, in the place where you are developing yourself, that's when God will bring the person. And if you do not know the person before the person comes, it's still not a problem. He will not leave you without a help. You will not be confused. I heard somebody saying, what if God has shown you the person? Uh -huh. And the person changes mind and go to another person. Uh -uh. <laughs> trouble day. There's no trouble. Are you the one that showed yourself? Who showed you? God. And then go back to him. Go back to him and say, ah, the best thing that you showed me, even if it is that person that changed his mind, God is still in the business of creating and making and repackaging. I mean, it, it, there's no big deal even about all those things. The Lord, because somebody is saying, the one that is really, 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 really meant. When, when I, because I don't want to miss that person. I don't want to, I don't want to. Then you now go and yield yourself even into sin. God will help us. I must say this before I leave the young, I mean, the, the young people. Do not set up an idol in your heart. In Ezekiel chapter 14, the Bible says from verse 1, it said, Then came Satan on the elder, of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up idols in their hearts. And they have put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Hear what God said, therefore speak unto them. Say unto them, thus saith the Lord God. Every man of the house of Israel that set up his idol in his heart and put the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh up to the prophet. What did God say? I, the Lord, I will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. You may be having dreams, sister. And it's still God answering you according to the idol of your heart. That's where God is a fearful God. Because you, if you do not come to him with an open heart, empty heart, I have done it before. Lord, Lord, is it brother Simon? Oh, Lord, let it be him. <laughs> if it is him, eh? In the place of prayer, we take excursion. And if it is him, I will now be thinking of many, 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 many good, good things that we'll be doing together. And still praying, you know? <laughs> On top of it, I will now say, Reke bo shota kashataya. Yeke sotoria. Amen. Who am I deceiving? Myself. You come to God with an idol. If you really want to know the mind of God, come with an open heart. Empty. Let God speak to you. And if you are not hearing him, uh -uh, the jealousy should be, how can I be your daughter? And I'm not hearing you. If you could talk to Samuel, ah, you will talk to me. Oh. You know, I was sharing a room with a sister when I was still single. Then we will get to fellowship. The sister will say, Yesterday night, the Lord came and he was talking to me. I was saying, what kind of sleep? <laughs> Did I sleep? God, you came to our room. You said this much to her and I did not know. Ah, Uluwa. <laughs> Show me mercy. Am I asking for husband? I'm saying I, I, I'm not receiving God's visitation. Somebody was sleeping beside the Eminimo Basilio. I am the one. Are <laughs> you listening to me? So be jealous for your life. If I be a daughter of my father,
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say hello, Frepal, the sister Shira Vadia. Asoka se prefas the sister Shafreki as the show si at the showing. Yes, the show show is just as the showing you, 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 even showing you the beginning thoughts, the beginning thoughts, the thoughts of the beginning, the thoughts of the beginning, the thoughts that were even in my mind when I made them male and female, when I made them male and female. Show. Showing you, even revealing to you, even thoughts that have been buried, buried by iniquity, buried by sin, buried by standards of this world. Showing you, showing you, for save the spirit of God in times to come, you will stand, you will have to stand as the light that is remaining, the only light remaining, the only light remaining in certain quarters, the only light remaining, showing even my standards, even my standards, even my standards, even my expectations. When I said woman, when I said woman this was what was in my heart this was not what well, this was what was in my heart not what is being painted by the world not what is being painted by darkness not what is being painted by sin not what is being painted by Satan not what is being painted by iniquity I am showing you I am showing you and this showing is help this showing is help this showing is help for saying the Spirit of God I am here to help you I am here to help you for from today says the Spirit of God Liba Juna Rika you will bear that mark in the spirit as king's daughters, king's daughters, king's daughters, king's daughters. Hey, honorable women, honorable women, honorable women, men and women of honor, women of honor in the spirit, women of honor in the spirit, king's daughters, king's daughters, chosen of destiny, chosen of destiny to carry the fullness of life on the face of the earth a hey, women indeed a hey, women indeed women after the order of the beginning of the beginning of the beginning says the spirit of god thank you jesus thank you faithful father thank you lord we cannot thank you enough oh your help will come for us in the name of jesus we will not miss it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We must hear God. He can speak through you with now witness. And it must be confirmed even with the word of God. The, the word of God speaks. And even when the Holy Spirit is leading, you don't say something told me. It is not a thing. It is a person. Then you perfect all these things by reason of exercise. It is not when you need somebody to marry. That you will now be finding out how he speaks to you. He speaks. He's been leading you. It's just that you're not conscious of it. Sometimes they come, don't go that way. Sometimes it will just flash in your spirit. And if you follow it and say, ah, when this name comes up, I don't know what it means, but that person comes in. Say, hey, is the Holy Spirit trying to tell me that this person is coming? And if it happens one time, two times, three times, and the Holy Spirit sees you responding, yeah. you, you will grow in it. Yeah. But if it is every time you push it out, it will not strive with you. It will just leave you. Oh, I had one experience, mommy. I was living with that, my sister. Then in the night, I will feel something cold touch to my body. And in that house, a wonderful house, rats were living in the ceiling. So I would say, oh God, deliver me from this house. Is it rat, rat dropping I want to talk about? Now it's wee wee or my body. When I checked my body, I didn't see any wetness. But I felt that cold thing. I spoke in tongues small. I went to ease myself and I came back and I slept. It used to happen. And I didn't ask questions. <laughs> we have Christians that don't ask questions. And now, uh, strange things. Until a day I was reading Kenneth Hagin's book. And he said he had an accident. And he was in the hospital. And he was talking to God. And uh, God said he will heal him. In a record time, but that he has brought him there so that he could talk to him. <laughs> Can you see God? Can you see God arranging accidents? <laughs> eh? So that he can gain attention. Somebody he wants to talk to. So he said in the night, he felt the cold touch of the Holy Spirit. And that he knew it was time to pray. I closed the book. 
I said, is that what it means? Is that what it means? Then I opened it again. He said he didn't know what to pray for, but he started praying in the spirit. He prayed in the spirit. That after some time, the name of his cousin, you know, dropped in the spirit. And he prayed and prayed and prayed. He didn't know what he was praying for. He prayed until the burden lifted. In the morning, he received a call that that cousin was involved in a ghastly motor accident, but he survived. I cried that day. You know why? I said, God was looking for me to wake, to pray. Pray for somebody in intercession. But sleep, sleep. <laughs> hmm? Sleep. And then, uh, and then, uh, ignorance. Lack of understanding of what it meant. Did not allow me. I said, God, I hope you found somebody to wake. Eh, I hope it is not all of us that let you down. That day I knew that I was asking for that thing to return. Maybe you too, as I'm talking, you have been seeing some consistent thing. It's strange. It's not you. It's not unrighteous. So it's God. It's the Holy Spirit trying to, trying to reveal himself to you. If only we will follow it up. Even if you don't know, say, Holy Spirit, what does this thing mean? He said he will teach us all things. He will guide us into all truth. He will show you the things. He said he will show you the things to come. Is that not what it says in John 16, 13? Is how be when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you the things even to come. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, when you have received that it is this person, are you listening? And you have confirmed and you confirm. Let me say it. Oh, there are some people, their level is God. They are like Gideon, if it is Brother James. Let him hear, wear yellow shirts. And let him sit by the pillar on Sunday. If that is your level, do you know God will answer? He will let Brother James wear yellow shirts and sit there. Say, thank you, Jesus. Lord, don't be angry. On Sunday, let it be red. Don't let him sit there. Let him sit in that corner. Do you know God will oblige you if it is that level? But if your level has passed that, yeah. and you hear that testimony, and you two you are talking to God and say, yeah. <laughs> eh? Ah, it happened to me. Because when God gave me a scripture, I said, He will give me my meat in due season. I carried the matter to the brother, the brother that God is warning me against. I said, Do you understand what this scripture means? God said, your own. I will give it to you in due season. He'll be like, say, this one will not be yours. I carried it too. Because <laughs> if not for God, I would have been lost. Then one day I cried. I said, God, I've been crying also. You did not listen. You did not hear me. You did not hear me. He said, Jeremiah 33.3. 3. I said, call upon me. And I will answer you. He said, finish reading it. <laughs> finish reading it. He said, I will show you. Great and mighty things which you don't know. You know, scriptures has length and breadth and depth and height. That scripture is a serious scripture for some people that they will jump up and say, the Lord says he will show me. But for me that day, it was an indictment. God said, I have been talking to you. Since you say you do not hear, I will now come down to the level of physical things. I will now begin to show you. <laughs> when God showed me the behavior of that brother, nobody say revelation, no. Physically, like this. I go back to my room. I said, God, God said, those are the things you want to marry. He did not even say that is the person. He said, those are the things. Ah, may you hear God. May the spirit of the Lord not leave you alone. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Then, of course, when you obey the Holy Spirit, there will be peace and assurance. I also want to say it here that you must also have a consent of spiritual authority. Don't go alone. Don't do it alone. Don't even marry a brother that doesn't have a hand over his life. Somebody who has never submitted to anybody will now come and be the CEO over your life. You say, sit down. Say, sit down. Get up. Go to that place. And you must obey. Abby, you must obey. 
Somebody whom Jesus cannot talk to. He doesn't have regard for anybody. He doesn't fear any man. No fear for God. That's the person you want to go and submit yourself to. So you must be very, very sure. So if you are praying for the person you will marry, you'll be praying, you say, God, give me somebody who fears you. <laughs> you know they say the head of every woman is a man. The head of man is Christ. The head of Christ is, is an organogram. You say, Lord, I am ready to submit to any man you give me, but let that man too, let his head be under who? And those of us who are married, with prayer, with fasting, with our character, with our behavior, we are resetting, we are resetting the head of our husbands. Because it must be correctly positioned. Mm. If that head is not where it's supposed to be, that head we have problem. And when that head have problem, you know where I come from, we have psychiatric hospital. They will not cut the head and send it to hospital. It is me that we carry the head like this. All of us, we are sick. <laughs> All of us, we are sick. So when I get there and they examine the head, they will not say, they will say, ah, it must be admitted. They will say, they will not say, madam, cut the head, put it on the bed. Is that what they will say? All of us, we are sick. Do you see why you need to give attention to your husband now? Aha. Uh -huh. So the one that God cannot talk to. You know, some, some, some of you, you will tell your husband, say, I'm going to report it to the pastor. I say, so what? Go and tell pastor. If you tell pastor, uncle, what does that mean to me? Ah. I am now sitting there analyzing and say, even when I told him that I want to tell pastor, he said, is, is it analysis <laughs> that we solve this matter? I mean, you cry to God and say, we are in trouble. We are in trouble, oh God, you must not leave us alone like this. That is not the time you'll be crying, he didn't give you money. Or he didn't buy something for you. Or he didn't, you say, Lord, we have missed it. Totally missed. Show us mercy. Ah, because you know what gives me assurance? Ecclesiastes says two are better than one. It says if one falls, the other one will lift up. It says a threefold cord is not quickly broken. I see it like a triangle. I see God at the head. I see my husband and I see myself. I have a relationship with my husband. My husband has a relationship with God. I have a relationship with God, threefold court. When that one is in place, we are a no match, even to the enemy. Yeah. When I want to talk to my husband, if I do not want to receive, go and sit down. I'm not going to do that one. I will not go to him directly. Uh, if I talk to him, the farthest my words can get is this external air. I will go to God. And God will speak to him. And he cannot say no. This thing I'm telling you, it took me years to also learn it. Ah, mommy, I was a teacher. I bought something in the school. I was working for the federal government in the state, so we they pay our salary early. So we bought things in bulk, and I brought it home. And I said, Andy, see this thing, they're very cheap, and we need them. You know what he said? He said I should go and re return it. He said I should return it. I didn't tell him before buy. Hmm? No, you don't know. You don't know how painful it is. Though I married my husband. We started church, so I, he was a full-time pastor. He still is. So the salary that is coming in was from this teaching that I went to do. It is this money that I went to use to buy. Is the one that you and I will claim to be my money. Is that not what we will say? Yes. Uh -huh. uh -uh. And I saw something that is cheap. As a wise woman. <laughs> and I bought it. He now said I should return it. He's like, did I hear him well? I went, I went into the room. He has spoken. So there is no, I, I mean, no more word about that one. So I now said, God, I changed my prayer. Please, let me see somebody to buy this thing off me. We needed it in the house, but I don't want civil war. Do you know what civil war is? Amen. Amen. So when I go back to the staff room, I announced, please, 
Was there, is there anybody who wanted this yesterday? And, and he said, well, you said you needed it. I said, we don't need it. Just buy. <laughs> Give me money. I brought the money home. We now went to buy that same thing down the streets in an expensive manner. But there was peace. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Amen. Now listen. Listen, Lord. Listen now, listen. So, I now went to God. I said, God. But he said, a virtuous woman buys things from far in places where he's cheap. This is the only money we are presenting before you to bless. We use it for ministry. We use it for the home. Must I continue to buy things in an expensive manner? Will you not talk to my husband? And let him see reason so that he will understand. I didn't use it to buy clothes. Oh. So another time, when they brought something like that, I took it. I said, let me pick one. Let me go and find out. Uh -huh. I started learning submission. I started learning how to be under authority. So before I presented it, I did rehearsal. How? Oh. Oh. You think? When the Bible says every wise woman build her home, you think you stroll into it. Every spiritual instruction, you must pray yourself into it. The devil will not allow you to do it. So, I was looking at his face. Because some men, if their eyes are up, you cannot present matter. You can have good matter and present it in a wrong way. Or you can present it in a good way at the wrong time. So when I saw that, uh, I could. And I said, they brought this. I don't know whether we should buy it. but <laughs> You know what he said? He said, that is where I have a problem with you. This kind of good thing, why did you buy one? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He said, why did you buy one? Go and buy more. Eh? Is this not my husband? What made the difference? Eh, what made the difference? I prayed. I asked God to come into the situation. I looked at him and he said, hey, I learned that lesson. So even for me to ask for school fees of my children, I don't stroll. To just go and make a demand. In some homes, they have open heaven. In fact, it is the husband that will be saying, How much? Niskufis and one more year. If in your own house, it is not like that. Learn wisdom. Learn wisdom. Learn wisdom. Your husband will not suddenly grow up to trust you overnight. You will pass through hurdles, exams. And then he will say, hey, now I know. <laughs> now I know that this is a person meant for me. Ah, I looked at it. You know, could have sat down and be saying, this is not my money. Eh? I worked for it. This thing that I'm asking, I, I, are we not going to use it together? In fact, I can go on strike. I have all those choices before me, but I chose. I chose. To tow the path of righteousness. So that God's name can be glorified. Amen. Amen. I said, don't leave us spiritual abbey, authority. Don't call the bluff of those who raise you. You will need them in the course of the journey. You also will shut your mouth. Because in the day when you want to stand and minister to other lives, you will not have any, any, any hand that will release you. Even to so do. And then the devil would have caught in on you. God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me say this for the married. I know my time is up. Far, far up. <laughs> but let me say this. You know, one less, please, let's read Malachi chapter 2, verse 15. Malachi 2, 15. Malachi 2, 15 is also talking about that oneness. Oneness. What did he say? And did not he make one? Yet hath he the residue of the Spirit, and wherefore one, that he might seek, what? A godly seed. Therefore take it to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. Now if you read it from 
maybe 13, you see the offering being brought before the altar of the Lord, and God didn't accept, then tears covering the altar. And they say, why didn't God take this offering? God said it. He didn't take it because he has dealt treacherously with the wife of his youth. And God now came and said, and, say, Did, and yet this woman you have dealt treacherously against is your companion. And yet she is the wife of your covenant. I cannot even bypass that. Marriage is for companionship. That's the reason. One of the reasons why God made it in the beginning. So companionship. Companionship. May the Lord make our spouses our companions. Yeah. Uh, some people who have not left father and mother, they are not companions. So they are still, you know. Some father and mother is not even biological father and mother. Some father and mother are their jobs. And they, 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 they come home, they still carry laptop. And they, they still be pressing. The wife will be talking. <laughs> some women too, they carry work home. No time for companionship. They say, yes, she's the wife of your covenant. Re marriage is a covenant relationship. And God says, I am a witness. So in the day when you are taking your vows, don't be absent-minded. Some will be saying, I, Adebola, take the... You'll be repeating it after the priest. But you say, ah, look at crowd. I hope this food will be enough. <laughs> As my wedded husband. To have and to hold. Hey, the woman with the cake, I hope she will not be late. So. <laughs> hey, uncle, ah, he also came. Your mind is not in what you are saying. Because if your mind is there, how can you come before the holy altar of the Lord with God being a witness? And you are saying, with all my worldly goods, I did and thou. And you now get into the house. You are now saying, no, 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 no. My money is my money. I mean, let's face reality. You walk, I walk. You've, did you forget what you said before the holy altar of the Lord? Of the Lord? In sickness, eh? in wealth, in uh, check the vows. Because you need to know what you are letting yourself into. It's not only the glamour of everything. Uh, that one is just for one day. And after that day, you now face reality. And God will not defend you. Yes, he will say you said it. And I am a witness. May God help us. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I was saying they remove bone. You remember? For the married and for the single. Now, this bone that was removed, in the day of Adam and Eve, they were only two. So bringing them together to become one was not a matter. But now, ah, only God knows how many places that bone has gone. Though. Some of us were born in uh, uh, Lagos. We went to school in uh, Unsuka. When we left Unsuka, our father was transferred to Niger State. We followed. Then we came back to uh, Ogun State. From there, you have been going. That bone is no longer slim. It has taken so many things, you know. And my people will say, if, <laughs> if, if you use leaf to wrap le uh, soap, if, the, if it stays for long, after some time, the leaf back back will become soapy. So some things have attached themselves to us. It has become us. It has become attitude. It has become our, our, our what now? Part of us. In fact, the way we defend those things, you would think we were born with them. Now, you want to fit in into that side. What are we going to do to that boy? Eh? Mommy is doing like this. Uh -huh. Somebody is doing like this. Tell me what we will do. Just tell me. I'm looking for the word. Eh? Ah, you are not talking to me, oh? Eh? We will break it. Don't you know? No, you not break the bone. What will you do? Trim it. Eh? We remove it. What do we use? Something that has been there for many years. You think it's easy? Eh? We will use sharp, a bit sharp knife uh -huh, to, 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 to remove it. What are we looking for? The bone. When you are using sharp knife, you think it's palatable for the bone. If you know the language of bone, you will know the bone is crying. No? So even in the process of fitting in, you will have times that you will cry. Oh. You will shed blood. Oh in terms of sacrificing some things that you feel you have been so used to. Why? You want to be one.
You want to be one. Because some two people can be declared as one. They say they are no more two. They are one. Everybody will clap like we normally clap. But two people will go back home. <laughs> two aspirations, two goals. And for us, you know, as they say, you know me before you marry me. Right? Even before you came, God has called me. I have ministry. And there are things that God has told you. I told you. I told you. Why now? You cannot separate me even from. <laughs> ah, the Lord will show us mercy. Amen. We must become one. You know why? You know where what is paining me is the fact that because the devil has deceived us for many years, for ages. It is the one flesh union that we produce godly seed. And until we become one, we cannot produce anything godly. And that is what God is looking for. In some versions, they put it godly children. Some, they put it godly offspring. Even if it is children, can God not bring you together and say, raise this child for me. For he will be the savior. He will be the deliverer. All those are our great men and women. And, 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 is it not people that raise them? Ah, people like the mother of Moses. How many heads do they have? They have three children. The three of them were in the forefront of revival. Are they the only people in Israel? Eh? Miriam, Aaron, and Moses. Uh -huh. Even Jesus, when he was going around picking disciples, he got to some families. He couldn't pick any. He got to some, he picked one. He got to some, he picked two from the same womb. I mean, you will beg God that God will send you on an errand. I mean, he will, he will, he will, he will, he will make you to produce something godly. It can be children, but I love seed. Baba Kenneth again never stepped on the soil of Nigeria till he died. But the seed that that union produced is still blessing men up until now. There is something your union will produce that will outlive you. That's what God is looking for. So brother that does not know where he's going. Eh? He doesn't even understand. All he's seeking for, you see, you see this is my PhD. I must say, my supervisor, we, who, is, who is going to bury him with that certificate? Is it that certificate we used to enter heaven? Please don't let us get it wrong. Oh. If we are working in the marketplace for, and it's not for God, there is nothing God is gaining. You are not touching lies or so. All that you are looking for is money. Ah, you have made a choice. Because you cannot serve God and mammon. I asked them in one Bible study in church, I said, if I get a job that is paying me 80,000, and then I got another one, they said 250. Do I need to pray? He said, pray for what? He said, God has already answered now. <laughs> you see, we are removing the Holy Spirit from everything. God will help us. So you could not begin in the spirit and edit in the flesh. Fitting. Now, if I hear a man that says, you see that my wife, she can talk too much. In fact, she does not know how to dress. She's very lazy. She's very this. I would say, good. But you see that bone, where was it originally? Eh? Where was it originally? It was inside the man. God just brought it out. So what is the problem? Eh? What is the problem? Okay. Amen. Listen though, because I must go and sit down now. Amen. You see, it's an extension of the bone. I agree that it is possible in the bit to go around, go around. Maybe the bone has taken some other things. Eh? Is it is it is is it the business of the bone? Because if it is Jesus, are you listening? For men that you should desire to marry you, they are men like Jesus. Who will be walking on the church by the washing of the water by the word? They are cleansing the church to get rid of all spots and wrinkles and blemish that they will be able to present the church unto himself, not even unto God. Some men, they have dream of the kind of woman they have. They tell you every day that that is the kind of woman I want to marry, but they are not willing to do any labor. I am not just carrying a microphone. I was not born with it. So now we say, I wish my wife is like you. I said, your wife cannot be like me. I said, you see this life. 
It has been taught, fasted over, prayed over, still being prayed over. Uh-uh. When I met my husband, he said he has been praying for six hours nonstop. I said, Kilo day. He said, he's not Baba Deboye praying for 12 hours. That's the target. I said, well, that's how I've been praying my own. And God has been hearing me. <laughs> I said, what is the problem? We were still cutting. He now said, tomorrow, we are going to pray for six hours. <laughs> Speaking in tongues, no English, no Yoruba, no. He said, ah. Because he is going somewhere. And he needs a help that we help him. So I must be groomed. When we got to the classroom, when I checked the time, after a long time, it was 10 minutes. I said, I'm in trouble. Praise the Lord. I made up my mind. I will do it. After, after four hours, all my jaws were paining me. I said, I couldn't go for that. I said, let him say whatever he wants to say. In fact, he looked at me. He said, you have even tried. He said, first attempt, four hours, you have tried. I know that next time you will reach it. <laughs> I got encouraged. So I made up my mind. Next time I will hit six hours. And God helped me. When we got married, we didn't have church office. I was teaching in a school. I was living inside that school. So it's under the tree. That we, well, that's where we used to do VG. He would not say, Mrs. Daniel, you are leading the supernatural night. That is praying in tongues till morning. With pregnancy. I will not be going, You would think I was born with it. I was not born with it. I was trained. I was groomed. In order for us to be able to go together. Where is that man going? And he will have to labor on you because... Jesus is still busy laboring over the church. Any man that is not, that doesn't have care, he said, you'll be doing church. Let me be going after money. Ah, he's not going anywhere. Oh. I'm telling you. So run for your life. And if you are in contact with a man that has not seen it, and God is saying it is this person, then bend down and begin to pray for what to happen. God to open his eyes and let him see it so that you can go somewhere together. Amen. Amen. Even the man, is the space still free? The space is not free. So they need to do surgical operation to create, to remove all the things that, we have been, that have been there for me to fit in. So you see some behavior, some tendencies that you are complaining about. Why are you complaining? Once you see it, you are the one seeing it. You say, Oluwa, he is manifesting another one. Me too, I have my own. No. But God... <laughs> <laughs> God, deal with it. What is it that you cannot pray about? You pray about habits. You pray the way he dresses. You pray the way he eats. You pray, the way he, you pray about the way he spends money. But you will sit down and be talking, talking, talking. If you see my husband, eh? What they say you should go and help? Eh? You are not analyzing. Is it analysis that they say you should be doing? You carry the matter to God. And you will see God helping you. Before your very eyes like this, there will be transformation. Then the two of you will be able to fall together, even to go ahead with God. God will show us mercy. Yeah. Male and female created did them. I can't go deeply because we are different. The way we think is different. The way we talk is different. The way we, you know, we perceive things. They are different. We cry. They don't cry like us. Abby? Yes. When we are happy, we cry. When we are not happy, we cry. <laughs> when we see somebody crying, we also cry. <laughs> Men are not like us. We, we talk. Eh? They are. My husband will go for a meeting. When he comes, to, how are you? I was in a meeting. He said, fine. Meeting of three days. <laughs> That's why when they are going somewhere, because they are very brief, brief, there is no way they will pack their bag and they will not forget something. So be a wife. Be a wife. Be who God has created you to be. Respond. When pressure comes, it is to bring out the virtue in you. I mean, it is to bring out the virtue in you. My husband can be calling me at interchange. I learned it. I'm calling, coming home with them. How many of us? One, two, three. We are ten. 
we are taking pounded yam. In fact, one of them is saying he wants a bono. Another one is saying, he's saying, kinikon. He said, kinikon, kinikon. And in my heart, I say, hey, doesn't he know how he left the house? Eh? How can he be saying? And he would, all of them will be shouting, you know, in the vehicle like that, and they're coming. Amen. I have a choice. Choices that are going on in your mind, they are also open to me. I say, today, he will disgrace himself. <laughs> he won't even meet me at home. <laughs> many, many things to be going on. But if I say Holy Spirit, what do I do? That's when I will remember I have one bush meat under, inside the freezer. There is something, there is something, there is something. That's when somebody will knock the door and say, Mommy, I'm going to I said, I should come and greet to the sister, can join me in pounding the yam. They, everything will now be ready. Then they will come. Oh, they will come. All of them will now say, ah, God bless you. When they will leave, at least the one that has happened, they did not only pray for me, they gave me money. And my husband was surprised. I said, that's my wife. When they left, I said, Amen. Amen. When they left, he was very happy. Because I've had a man of God said, when you are under pressure, that is when what is inside of you can come out. Let me tie it up with this and go and sit down. Mommy, what is inside this thing? Are you sure? Please help me to look at it. Is it not Sprite? I think it's seven up the way I'm looking at it. It's water, eh? Inside this bottle. If I subject this water to serious wahala and pressure, what am I doing? I'm pressurizing it, Abby. Yes. I can even throw it down and kick it. Does it change what is inside? Oh. Hey. hey, problems will come outside. Whether from your husband or from relatives or from friends, or colleagues, or even from the pit of hell. It will be like water on dog's back if you can focus on what is inside. Your inner man. If I put hot water inside a very good thermos flask and I cook it, if I leave it from morning till night, will the temperature change? If I carry that flask and put it inside a bucket of water, eh? Will it affect what is inside? Oh, so nothing must affect what is inside. What am I saying today with the help of the Holy Spirit? Focus attention on your inner man. Grow to a level where God will be able to defend you. Even when you need something, he will know the, when you need it. He will know the time. He will know who. He will know when and everything. And he will be able to defend you. And he will not only defend you, he will showcase you. God told me that he's looking for homes that he wants to show to people that the word of God still works. He is returning us to Genesis 2 marriage. Because in Genesis 3, the enemy came. And when they asked Adam, where are you? Have you eaten of the fruit of the... He said, the woman, it is no longer this is the bone of my bone. He said, the woman that you gave to be with me with me, it's a loose relationship. Many of us grew under that kind of marriage. But God is saying, I am returning you to what it was at the beginning. And if you are going to get there, then you must align even with God. Die to yourself. Live for him. Die to yourself. Live for him.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hela hal so free ma tishio pa sentora vazilia. Masho pa feshini a toshen fresti anto parivale desgina hal dijidio. La chem prophesy just ten prophesy cast ten prophesy a deshtia. I cast ten prophesy a prophesy a prophesy a prophet a kisian. I tell you, show fasti anto prophesy a tis. Taking lowly estates, inconsequential estates in the natural, but are high strengths in the spirit. For you see, you have been lied to. And I'm revealing to you a truth that as you take your place, 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 you become a joint that supplies. You become a joint that supplies. And there's a supply that even my work needs at this time. There's a supply that will ordain you to supply. A supply that will be supplied even by your raising to fit into this joint. For say the Spirit of God, no more will homes, no more will homes, no more, 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 no more, 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 more will homes be filled with men and women who are not joined, who are not joined. I am here to join. I am here to join. For part of the blessings, even of this season, is a joining. Have I not said I'm here to heal homes? I'm here to heal homes. Homes will be healed. Homes will be healed. Baskets will be adequately weaved. Baskets will be adequately weaved. Even to carry the harvest. For a harvest is coming. A harvest is coming. A harvest is coming. And that is why I'm painstakingly going after precept upon precept. To prepare the ground for this harvest. Because none will be lost. None should be lost. None should be lost. And see Farima Tula Dasia de Akatiaka. Do not count yourself out. Do not count yourself out. Out. Do not count your home out. Do not count your husband out. Do not count your wife out. Do not count your family out. Because you ordained of me to be part of the basket that will carry this harvest. Yeah, home. Yeah, house. Yeah, generation that will fit into my agenda. There is rejoicing in the heavens. There is rejoicing in the heavens as we see your work progress in light for this basket to be weaved and the harvest is trapped and then my agenda Agenda. My agenda is pushed forward, but do not excuse yourself. And I hear the Lord saying to some Miva Luri Pando Lucosian Tulata and Prico Tushan Pia Kulata Siamata. Now you have received help. You have received help. So say no more. Say no more in your heart. Say no more in your heart. My marriage is lost. It is not lost. It is not possible for it to be lost. But have I not said, as long as there's life, there is hope. I have brought you life. I have brought you life by what I've spoken to you today. So there is hope. So there there's hope. The attitude is to key in by faith. Key in by faith. And painstakingly listen again. Listen again. And obey those instructions one by one. And see that dead marriage. See that dead marriage. Spring to life. Spring to life. Spring to life. And occupy that position that I ordained it for. Do not count yourself out. As long as there's life. As long as you have life. There is hope. You are enough for me to enter. You are enough for me to enter your house. You are enough. You just align and I will enter. And I will turn these things around. I will turn it around. I will turn it around. That is the reason for the season. The basket must be weaved because the harvest is coming, says the Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. Mm. Thank you, Lord. We receive your word. And it shall be a reality. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Strengthen our hearts Amen. to do it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I think I should stop here now. I want us to bow down our heads to pray. If there is any other thing to say, maybe inside the questions. Let's just bow down our heads to pray. The only prayer that is coming up in my spirit is for us to ask for the help of the Lord. Help my life, O oh Lord. Help my life. Help my life, O oh Lord. Help my life. Help my life, O oh Lord. Help my life. Oh Lord, help my life. 
Tell the Lord to help us. Amen. I believe this is a good time to respond to the Lord. I just, there are many things that have been said. Can we open up our mouths and talk to, to God? Fadosh. Liberaras, Megerebereos, Megereberegos, Mandalariadas, Mekeferedes, Meradus, Mekefias, Mekefados, Eh, Mushutobarius, Eh, Barasido, Sutabariasa. Egiras, 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 up, 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 oh, 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 Tari, Tari. Tari, 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 Mantari Atara, Helebente, 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 Hus, Hus, Has, 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 Has. Us, 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 us,
zebra tosha regadalest the fetter media parata and re thicky of for figure theft at the thief of for fifth at the temethin for fifth of for anything on it I in a high the Lord fresh the zebra tolly at the liver as the sire for you've just come to my theater you've just been brought to my theater you brought to been brought to my tether with my surgical knives. Mm. You've just been brought to my tether. And I've taken some things off you. you you've been brought to my tether with my surgical knife. I, 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 you, you were brought in. You were brought in. You were brought in with many things. And I have applied my surgical knives upon you. I've applied my surgical knives upon you. You've been brought even into my theater, even as a porter, with your clay roughly molded. And I am remolding you again. I'm breaking you down and remolding you again. I'm taking things out. My surgical knife is in oppression. And I'm taking things out. You've been laid upon my theater bed. And I've removed things of you. I've removed things of you. I've brought up and I've removed things of you. I've removed things that will not make you function. Even as a daughter in Zion. Even as a daughter in Zion. Even as a daughter in Zion. I've removed them out. I've removed them out. I, your Lord, has performed even a surgical operation upon you. But I say unto you, I say unto you, do not walk in the path that will make you pick up diseases again. Do not journey along the path that will make you pick up disease again. For I have done that oppression and the oppression is permanent. That disease cannot come back. But you have to adhere, not to walk in paths, not to take wrong thoughts, not to take wrong judgment, not to take wrong decisions that will make you pick these diseases again. For I have done it. I brought you help. I brought you help. I brought help to homes. I brought healing 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 to unreconcilable differences. I brought healing to homes. I brought healing to hearts. I brought healing to homes. I brought healing to homes. My palm is in the house. Even my palm. Even my palm upon homes. Upon wives. Upon husbands. My palm is in the house. And I have sorted out issues that have lasted for months. I've sorted out issues that have lasted for years. Say the Lord to a particular couple. You've concluded and said, this is not doable again. But I've just done it. Yes. I've just done it. Yes. I've just done it. Yes. I've just done it. I've just put love in your heart for your husband. I've just put love in your heart for your husband. I've just put a fire of love in your heart for your husband. It's a fire of love. It's a fire of love. Because you are partaking of this feast. I've just done it. I've just done it. I've just done it. I've recovered that home. I've recovered that home. I've recovered that home. See it, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Please let's have the interpretation. For you know what has happened to you. Do you know what has happened to you? You have ascended. 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 For not one of you, says the Spirit of God, is where you were when you first came in. You have ascended by light. You have ascended by knowledge. You have ascended by understanding. You have ascended by the entrance, even an abundant entrance that was left for you to come up. For all of you have come up. Every last one of you have come up. You have all come up to a new plane yeah a new plane a new plane you have all come up by light you have all come up by light you have all come up by light and I only ask and I only beseech that as you have ascended dwell here dwell here dwell here dwell on this new height dwell on this new height for as many of you Sapuru Shamadia, have come up here before but have come down you have come up here by light but denied it but I'm saying now dwell here dwell here you are not dwelling here not just for you alone but for the many generations that are tied to your loins dwell here dwell here citing even the next portal citing even the next portal for I'm leaving you as a pattern I'm making you a pattern I'm making you a pattern even a witness even a witness for many more young people that will look to your life for, for many of you, Pashuna, Vripatia, I hear my word, my spirit, epistles, epistles, you are being written, you are being written for men to read, for men to read, for men to read, for you see the enemy, even darkness, seeks to expand me completely from the earth, but I am writing, I am writing, I am writing epistles, even witnesses, that will remain for generations to read, and my pattern will remain, for my pattern must remain, for men to see even a lighthouse to follow even to glory allow me to complete completely write you but i say dwell here dwell here occupy this territory or oh, master this zone master this soul let this be your new reality let this be your new reality and escape certain thoughts that have troubled you up till now for no more will those thoughts trouble you no more will those thoughts trouble you you have ascended by all their access no longer will they access you no longer will they penetrate your thought life but dwell here Dwell in this deliverance. Dwell in this realm of deliverance. I speak liberty to you. I speak liberty to you. Dwell in liberty. Dwell in liberty. Dwell in liberty. Dwell in liberty. In liberty. In liberty. Even the liberty of the Spirit. Says the Spirit of God. Amen. 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 Is there so much activity of the Spirit in here? You know, there's, there's an awe. There's an awe that has come upon this meeting. And we should go with it. You know, we should go with it. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you so much, Ma. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Amen. So there's still room for more. Yes, Mommy is here. And um, I hope after we'll still be able to clap. <laughs> because right now, I'm not feeling like clapping or shouting. I'm just, you know when they said a surgery has been done. You know when surgery is done on you, you are still in sedation. <laughs> you are just quiet. You know, careful that the stitches will not tear. You know, mommy is our mommy, and I believe that there's a weight, you know, that prompted this body. There's a weight that also came with visitation, you know. So, I, I, the Lord, the Lord is gracious. I just see the Lord do 
a great work in our midst, in our company of women. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. The all is full. You know, I see a great work that he's doing. And I know that they will, that will come forth through the words. So you see that, you know, the encounter.